Um, attention, please. I'm waiting from whole live ID generation two. This this music is always so. This music is always so. I don't know. So bum 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 bum. Here comes Justice. Hey Rene, what's up, yo? I hope you guys are doing great. Oh, finally we're here. We're here. Ooh, I was stuck in traffic, so I had. <laughs> I had Evan Chan's help to change the time. But I'm back and I'm ready to play. It's the BGM of Steel. Yeah. Got back home okay? Yeah, I'm okay. As you can see, I am good. I think I did pretty well today with uh, everything that's happened. Oof. Today is pretty uh, heavy, but I'm glad that we can sit back now and enjoy. A full justice ace attorney. Let's go. Glad you got back in one piece. Thank you. <laughs> Sudah makan malam. Tadi cuma makan Indomie doang. Jam enam aku makan Indomie. I ate Indomie at like 6 p.m. and now it's like 20:30, which is um I don't know. I kind of feel like I could eat something, but rather than eating, I kind of want some coffee. It's been a while since I had coffee, but I think I kind of feel like getting one. I think I should order coffee. Yes, I should. Oh, I'm so sleepy. You know, I think it's um, I'm not really sure. It's just I was fine, but I think it was just the adrenaline of having to do stuff. But then now that I'm back in my chair, I'm like suddenly, oh god, I'm so sleepy. But we're about to, but we're about to, I don't know, do justice stuff. So I shouldn't be sleepy. Um, should I order coffee or coffee? No product substitution. Yes, product substitution. Ane? <laughs> okay. I want to buy. I. Oh, let's go. Okay, awesome. Okay, I ordered my coffee. How strong do you drink coffee? Um, I only drink uh, coffee mixed with milk. I used to drink black coffee when I needed to do so. Now I don't really. So yeah. Um, I think if I had the chance to experience a great coffee, I would. But it's just um, not on my priority list right now. I feel like it's one of those things, you know, once you, once you experience something, you won't be able to go back to it. Oh, actually, wait, my... Controllers are unplugged. My controller is unplugged. Let me fix that for myself. Let me fix that for myself. The game is already open though, so I don't know if I can. Uh, nope. Can I? Oh, okay, I did it. Uh, order yourself a coffee maker so you won't have to order coffee again. Yeah, but the thing is, that's it. Once I make good coffee for myself, I won't be able to drink coffee anywhere else again. Because I'll be like, oh, this is, this coffee is garbage. You know? <laughs> that's how I feel about it. It's like, it's safer to stay away from things that, you know, you know, you, you know, you will regret it. I mean, you know, not in that way. You, you guys know what I mean, right? Yes, 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 yes. Then you can make a coffee tier list. And that's really controversial. No, I don't think that's controversial. As long as I use real beans, then like all the coffee connoisseurs will be happy about it. Mm. This is why I avoid mechanical keyboards. <laughs> yes. Uh, once you move to mechanical keyboards, honestly, when you can customize your own, and then you go to some store and they have the keyboard, they sell like regular keyboards and you're like and you're like, oh my gosh, this feels so bad. <laughs> what counts as fake beans? Oh, not fake beans, you know. You know how some people are being like, oh my gosh, if you drink your um coffee like a ground sachet, that's that's not real coffee coffee and stuff like that, you know? Something like that. Honestly. Now I find the joy in not knowing the difference of what's good coffee and what's not good coffee. And I wanted to stay that way for a little bit more longer. <laughs> hmm. I started using a custom mechanical keyboard and I think they're just keyboards still. Well, they are keyboards. They are keyboards. 
they're just keyboards but um i'm not saying custom keyboards will automatically make your experience look better i mean if you have shit switches then it's not it's gonna be shit you know <laughs> Just putting it out there, but like, uh, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, they're just keyboards. For example, um, I don't know. Uh, some of my most comfortable keyboards, I wouldn't use it for FPS or something, just because the response time is just, you know, not good enough or something. <laughs> so it's just like. Some keyboards are just comfortable for typing or some of them has a nice feel, some of them has nice sound uh, Some of them, you know, it, it just depends on what you want <laughs> Yeah, yeah, what keyboard are you using right now? Oh, right now, I I have my Plume 65 uh, on my desk I've been using that one lately a lot um, I haven't been playing Valorant, so I don't know, I don't remember how it feels <laughs> Um, so it's specialized? Uh, in a way, yeah. Mm. That's the rainy board. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the rainy board. Mm. The wood thing is good. Yeah, the wood thing is good. The wood thing is really good. I feel like once you start using the wood thing, it will be hard to go back to regular keyboards. <laughs> Yeah, I want one hand keyboard for art. Haven't had any luck finding a proper one. Um, a lot of people use the Razer. Um, is it Razer Tartar Tartarus or some? Is it Tartarus? I don't remember. But there's definitely uh, more alternatives if you uh want something else or prefer something else. I think regular uh, labeled numpads would actually do if you don't mind missing some of the um, I don't know features. Hmm. But that's for gaming? Uh, actually, no. I think a lot of people um, use that for office use as well. Uh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Remember, guys, if you're too poor, you can always chop your own wood. <laughs> but literally, though, um, you can even make your own macro pad, just a budget macro pad. Like, of course, um, it's probably different the shape of this. It has no cushioning, it's whatever. But it does its job, so what? I feel like uh, I remember some people even using the Joy-Con for... Was it the Joy-Con? To uh, draw or something. Hmm. Yes, 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 yes. I think, yeah. It's kind of like... Do with what you have. <laughs> There's always a budget option for everything, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> The Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons? Yes, like use one of them uh, for like the buttons For the buttons, um, if you want to draw like for undo or redo or something, you know mm. How many keyboards do you have? That's a very good question Um, one, two One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven And then some unbuilt ones Seven? No, I don't know Yeah. It's just like a collector. It's just like a collectible thing. It's a hobby. It's hard to justify it because obviously, if you don't see the value in it, it's just like, oh my god, what a waste of money. But it's a hobby thing, you know? You guys have your own hobbies. Yeah. Some people are going to think your hobby is wasting, you know, you want such a waste of money. But that's all it is about what's, you know, what is a hobby? It will probably waste money. Yeah. So I don't care if people say it's a waste of money. It's my hobby. I bet your hobby... I bet once I heard about what your hobby is, I would think it's a waste of money. Something like that, you know? <laughs> and I don't care, you know? <laughs> right? And anyways, um, we did the very first case for Apollo Justice. It was a pretty sad case. It was a pretty... It was pretty much a struggle because I think I was half asleep while I was doing it and I was I'm just wondering why am I always half asleep somehow when I'm doing Apollo Justice actually this week I'm also a little sleep deprived and so is is not going to be good but I'm getting coffee so hopefully it's going to be nice and I, I I have a feeling that I'm less sleep deprived than last week so everything will probably go 
everything will be better, I guess. So, well, uh, we're gonna start episode two, which is called Turnabout Corner. Uh, investigation day one. Okay, so this is not only trial, we have investigation. Good, I have no idea what this is about, but we'll see. Right. Turnabout corner. I'm sorry I keep covering the thingy. Oh my god, it's hypnotizing. It's time to sleep. As long as we draw breath, the wheel of fate turns. Go! What is he gonna die? <laughs> <laughs> that melody sounds unnecessarily familiar. I have no idea. Spinning big crimes and what? And when the wheel stops. Sheesh! You die. Sorry, I was so distracted by the music. June 15. Flex that 3D, you go, girl. Two months have passed since Mr. Gavin's arrest. My first trial, and I lost both my mentor and my job. Awesome. Wait, but I thought you got reemployed. Yeah, I'll admit it. I was screwed. But even when I hit bottom, I told myself I'd never come here. Honest. Oh. Here being the legendary Ride and Co law offices. I don't remember it looking like this. <laughs> okay, Justice, time to stop trembling. Oh, you must be here for the interview. Right this way. There's a there's a floating spaghetti. Uh. Oh, it's Dotaru. Is the is the music loud enough? Is it the right volume? Hello there! You found the right place! Haha! <laughs> Welcome! Uh, uh, uh... What's with this girl? Well now, shall we begin? Begin... what? Right, first things first. Any special talents? Uh... Talents? You yeah, have a feeling, you know, like the BGMs are nice... The BGMs are okay. But it's just that the s starting music is um just it's just loud. The music on the title screen is just really loud for some reason. And just more and just brighter sounding. Like um like this one is mixed as if it's for BGM use, you know? It's not distracting. It's just like at the back of your ear. It's nice. But um, the music in the title screen is just like bah, 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 in your ears. Um, talents? Yes, well, you must have at least one. Well, uh, I guess. Defending? Defending? An unusual talent, but it'll do. With a little jazzing up, of course. Y you think so? Let's give it a go, shall we? Huh? Go ahead, show me! Defend! <laughs> Girl, if you say that, you're gonna be guilty or something and we'll have to defend you! Just give it all you've got. Don't hold back now! W what are you talking about? I could just defend here? First lesson, a professional can perform anywhere. Thanks. We want people to be laughing with us, not at us. Thanks. But I'm not sure why they should be laughing at all. What? What exactly do you think you came here to do? What? Uh, defend? No? Excuse me, but do you know where you are? Huh? The Ride and Colo offices, right? Oh. I was afraid of that. Don't worry, you're not the first. Look, what's going on here? Who are you? I came here to meet with the person in charge. Well, you've apparently made no fewer than two mistakes. 
mistakes. But I got a call from Mr. Wright this morning. Perhaps you should go read the sign out front again. What's there to read? Look, it says right there. Oh. What does it say? Right Talent Agency. Welcome to the Right Ta Talent Agency, where you've always come to the right place. I'm Trucy Wright, CEO. I'm a magician. It all came flooding back. The trial, that girl. Yo, hey, a manager. <gasps> My food! Hold on. My coffee! My cafe is... Here. Um... Hello, sir. Please pick a card. What food? Sorry, I meant drink. It's baby. That's right. She's my daughter. Hold on. Let's autoplay. Oh, it's just not that. Let's autoplay. Trucy. Right. Here, check out our flyer. From magic to the piano. So, what's your name? Apollo. Apollo Justice. Attorney at law. Ooh, yo, that interface. Hey, what? What is this new? Ooh, fancy new icons. What? That's crazy. Let's talk to her about WTA. So, is this really a talent agency? You bet. Daddy started it seven years ago when he quit law. He quit law, so now he doesn't live uh, with the law no more. Two people, does that include you? Trusty Wright, magician extraordinaire. I've done a lot of stage shows. Hey, too. I'm a professional, you know? Uh, right. Promise you'll come to one of my shows, okay? Let's see. Oh, and the other person our agency represents is... Phoenix Wright, pianist extraordinaire. <laughs> extraordinaire. Your dad, in other words. Didn't he say he couldn't play the piano? That's why he's extraordinaire. <laughs> Our agency doesn't see that as a problem. There are many magicians who can't do magic. At least you're optimistic, I'll give you that. <laughs> awesome. What about Trucy Wright, huh? So you're his, uh, you're Phoenix Wright's daughter? That's right! After daddy quit law seven years ago... I promised I would keep him fed. <laughs> so I'm kind of his sugar daddy, get it? <laughs> no, exactly no. I'm in charge of this whole office too. Pretty amazing for a young last 15, wouldn't you agree? Whoa, she's 15? 15? Uh, how old is Mr. Wright? Daddy? Oh, he's 33 this year. I'm sure there's a good explanation. I hope. Huh? <laughs> what? Um, about Mr. Wright giving up law. It was because of that incident seven years ago, wasn't it? Eh? You know about that? Not the details. I remember the news, though. It was a big deal. So I hear. I was too young to understand what was going on. I'll ask Daddy about it next time I get a chance. Daddy, right. That reminds me uh, about Mr. Right. Phoenix was pregnant when he was 18. He gave me a call this morning. Daddy's not here right now. He's in the hospital. Again? The hospital? The hospital. Yeah, he's on strict bed rest until he gets better. What? Okay, he was I am Gaprek. Which hospital is Mr. Wright in? I'll pay him a visit. Is it Hardy Clinic? Oh no. Oh Hickfield Clinic, thank God. It's quite close. Right, well, I'll be going now and I'll uh, give this showbiz gig some thought, okay? Wait, I'll go with you. 
Maybe he's gonna give birth to the second baby. Okay, it's 9.45. So, this is Mr. Wright's hospital. Ah, it's Honey! No! Oh! What the fuck? What? Yeah. The f bait and switch, dude. What? The hottie clinic. Oh. Eh? Visitors are you? Hmm? Uh, yeah. Are you the doctor? Yep, uh, Dr. Hickfield, the name. <laughs> Good morning, doctor. Oh, hi there, Trucy. Cute as ever. <laughs> is, is this daddy's room? Oh, yeah. Said he's gone for a morning checkup. Be back soon. How are you, Miss Trucy? Got any places you'd like examined? <laughs> Doctor, the nurse was looking for you. <laughs> Why, if it isn't the daddy or the cutest little thing in town? Mm -hmm. Guess I'll be off then. <laughs> Later, Trucy. I don't even remember how he sounded like. Wow, what an odd bird that guy was. Yo, bird! Morning. Didn't expect you so soon, Apollo. Mr. Wright. <laughs> I was like, hotty cleaning? Oh, Hickfield. Oh, thank God. And then he's there. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's too much. Anyway, what happened? So, what happened? Who could have imagined it? <laughs> Me, the victim of a hit and run. Oh, so it was him. A hit and you were hit by a car? Oh, he tried to swerve. I'll give him that. Picture me tossed 30 feet through the air. Only stopping when my head hit that telephone pole. Ooh, yikes. You hit a telephone pole with your head? Are you okay? Thankfully, my only injury was a sprained ankle. Ooh. He really is as lucky as they say. <sighs> There's something that, well, it just doesn't sit right. I just can't believe you have a daughter, Mr. Wright. And she's so big. Not fat, but <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, Trucy's still a child. Daddy, how many times do I have to remind you? I'm not a child anymore. She's like 15, isn't she? <laughs> but you'll always be daddy's little baby girl to me, Trucy. <laughs> My foot. I'm not buying it. <laughs> oh, something you should know about Trucy? What is it? She's a magician, right? She told me. Not a mere stage magician. She's a genius. <laughs> Aw, daddy. You'll soon come to appreciate her. Talent. You could just tell me things instead of insinuating them. What about the VTA? So wholesome. So why did you contact me? What could the right talent talent agency agency got? I'm so hard. To Yo, I can't English. I'm so tired. No need to get prickly now. Right talent agency. It's so hard to say that somehow today. I didn't ask to be dragged in like this. Huh? But didn't you come into the office of your own free will anyway? Well, yeah, of course. Help! We're in big trouble here at the office! Big! I thought someone was dying. So you don't think this is big trouble? <laughs> My town agency represents only two people. And one of them is in the hospital. That's right, Daddy. How are we going to pay this month's rent? And the groceries? Yeah, and that's a problem with such a tight operation. It's a symbiotic relationship. When one of us falls, the other two must fall. I don't think that's how it goes. <laughs> this isn't see this isn't exactly a suitable conversation to be having with a 15-year-old kid. 
<laughs> In any case, if Apollo here can't help you, you'll have to transfer to a new school. Again. Oof. No, I can't. I only just made friends. How could you do this to me? To us? Polly! Huh? What? Now it's my fault? On that note, how about you come work for us? I've got the perfect client for you already lined up. Uh, a client? You mean I get to do my job? I get to defend in court? Alright, I'll hear what you have to say. <laughs> you got him, daddy! Hook, line, and sinker! My god, terrible, terrible people. Aha! Now it's time to reel him in. It's official. I'm scared. <laughs> Yeah, what? All right, so who's the client? Oh, yes. Uh, here. Take a look at the map and I'll explain. Okay. Last night, I left the office just before 9 o'clock. Mm-hmm. I was going to that Indochine past the joint. Al dente's. Oh, like al dente? I play piano there, of course. That's when it happened. <gasps> no! The car sent me flying, nicked the telephone pole, and zoomed away. Creepy, huh? Just a tad. It's almost as creepy as hearing you tell me the story like it was no big deal. The car sped off in this direction. So, good luck! Huh? <laughs> yeah, huh? You wanted a client, didn't you? Well, I'm your client. Find the guy who knocked me into that telephone pole. Whoa, hold on. I'm a defense attorney, not a detective. Don't worry. Once you've found the guy, I intend to sue him. Then you can stick it to him in court. <laughs> I'm not a prosecutor either. I'm sorry, but this is crazy. I'm going home. <laughs> Don't get so worked up. It was just a joke. What? Huh? Oh, Daddy. Sorry, Apollo. He just loves jokes, you know? <laughs> Even the ones that aren't very funny. Yeah. <laughs> Your real client should be stepping, stopping by the office anytime now. The office? You mean the talent agency? No harm in going. It's not like I have anything else to do. One more thing. Do look into my accident too, would ya? I marked the scene of the tragedy on this map. People Park. It's right in front of this park. Should be easy to find. So, he's going to make me investigate this after all. Awesome. What's that on TV? Looks like some sort of action hero show. Oh, I know that one. That's the Sniffling Samurai. <laughs> sniffling Samurai? His booger flick attack is a big hit with the grade school crowd. Uh, I had no idea you liked this kind of stuff, Mr. Right. Well, what else is there to do when you're stuck in bed? Besides, the episodes will just keep piling up if I don't keep up, you know? Uh, yeah. Try not buying them. Not the only time I get to watch and write up my reports. Your reports? It's a long story. Like a lot of things, actually. Yeah. Mr. Wright's bed. It's really messy. Look how messy this is! You're just hopeless without me, aren't you, Daddy? Yikes. She's attempting to clean up. Look out! <laughs> you got me. What can I say? I was raised in a barn. Try not to let word get out, Apollo. If you don't mind. Yeah, it might ruin your illustrious, illustrious career pretending to play the piano. A swaying, spiraling stack of DVD cases. The Steel Samurai, the Nickel Samurai, the Pink Princess, the Zappy Samurai, Electric Boogaboo. <laughs> They're all children's action hero shows. This kid I know keeps sending them to me. Huh? Like a niece or nephew? Something like that. Quite the collection. This kid's parents must be really generous with their allowance. 
funny. Mystery doesn't seem the type that kids would like. <gasps> Is Maya sending the, these to him? This looks like a child's toy piano. Gotta practice. I don't want my fingers to get stiff. A pro always keeps his weapon close at hand. Shall I play you a tune? Eh, no thanks. Ah, how unfortunate. I so rarely get a chance to play. Mm. Right. Yo, look at my badge. What's that? Looks strangely familiar. How could you not recognize an attorney's badge? It's been seven years. I've forgotten a lot of things. I guess some seven years are longer than others. <laughs> Alrighty. Hey, hey, hey! How long are you planning on making me wait, eh? Ah, oh, good morning! Hey there, Trucy doll. Sounds like your pops had a bit of a rough spot, eh? I'll spell it in as well, I guess. This is our client. Hey, so this is that Polo fellow, eh? Oh, uh, yes. The name's Apollo. Look at him there, arms all crossed like, ready to fight. Yes, sir. You don't mean that literally, do you? The boss told you what I need, right? Don't let me down now, Polo. I'm just so tempted to say Poyo instead. Uh, don't worry about your defense, sir. I'm on it. Defense? Your noodle half-cooked? It's too late for defense. My castle's been stormed. My cube's been kept. My noodle stand's been stolen. Noodle noodle. You know Mr. Eldoon from the noodle stand, don't you, Polly? Eldoon? <laughs> No nicknames, please. And no, of course I don't know him. You know in these parts? Not really. Then you know the best noodles in town? Eldoon's noodles. Right. Uh, whose noodles? My noodles. Uh, help me out here, Trucy doll. This is Mr. Guy Eldoon. Our client. Maybe you can tell us what the problem is, Mr. Eldoon. Oh my god. Anything for you, Trucy doll? Oh, pointy. So, you run a noodle stand, Mr. Eldoon. Guy Eldoon's the name, and noodles are my game. The secret's in the soup. I've been searching for the perfect soup for a year and a half. Oh, that's not that long, really. My family's been noodled men for generations. Got a lot of expectations on my shoulders. Fifteen fathers passing the noodle to fifteen sons. That's a pretty old noodle. Hey, and fool that I was, I pushed it away. I rebelled against my pops and picked another livelihood. But that didn't turn out so well. Oh. There is no denying it. Salty broth runs through these veins, boy! So, it was like destiny that you became what you are. Right, destiny's the word. Oh, I fought it. But in the end, I was bound by the twisted noodle of fate. Not a mental image I care to linger on. So, last year, I started my noodle stand. The 15th generation of Eldoon's noodles. Uh, so tell me more about Eldoon's noodles. Man, I wanna eat noodles. Man. I did eat noodles though earlier. I told you guys, right? I predicted either. I predicted this. <laughs> Again. I don't know why I keep doing it for some reason. These are instant though. I mean, those were instant and these isn't. This isn't. You don't know the genius that are my noodles? I make them so salty, why? They're saltier than... Salt! No, I really don't want to find out. 
Kate is a regular at his noodle stand. He frequented my pop stand back during his attorney days too. Ooh. Langanan. Yep, him and his assistant. Oh! Because, okay. Because I guess in the Japanese version, Maya is crazy about ramen. So they used to eat here all the time. Yep. Let's just say they also sold burgers. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll be sure to drop by your stand soon. Wish you could, Sonny. Eh? Heck, I wish I could. I'd give anything for a bowl about now. What do you mean? It was stolen! My stand! Gone! Stolen? It was last night. I was doing my rounds. Blowing my whistle. It's like an ice cream truck spill but louder. He even gets complaints. <laughs> and now you're just trying to butter me up. That sounded more like the blues than a whistle. I closed up my stand for the night and parked by the house. Then this morning, dark and early, it was gone. My keep, my castle. Ooh, <laughs> Maraktis Clinic. <laughs> Yo, Marak mentioned. <laughs> Come in for a consult today. Banging post though. Maybe some bomb carted it off. Just guessing here. Well, I don't care who did it. Without that stand, I'm finished. Oh my god, his eyebrows are nori. All my noodle bowls were in there too. That's the saddest thing I've heard all day. You know it. Anyhow, that's the deal. Good luck. Good. Huh. Wait, wh what exactly is your request? My noodle stand! Find it! And the day you bring my baby back is the day you feast on as many noodles as you want. Of course I make it so hot and salty, two bulls would kill a man. Then I really need defense. <laughs> Speaking of defense, that's what I do. I'm a lawyer, not a detective. This is where I live. You drop, you drop by if you need any info, okay? Okay. Get it back today if you can, Poyo. I got noodles to make. Things have certainly taken a turn for the bazaar. Traffic accidents. And noodle stand thieves. Uh, actually... There was something I wanted to ask you about too, Apollo. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, listen to the lady's problem now. Don't be cruel. I lost some... Yo, what? Why do you guys keep losing... Arr. Something was stolen, okay? Hey, what's this? More thieving and skullduggery? Well, um... Someone stole a pair of my... <laughs> what? Someone stole a pair of my pennies. Panties? Uh, so they were uh, stolen your... Uh, my panties, yes. Uh, right, uh, panties, yeah. That's a crying shame, that is, truth it all. I was alone in the office last night. I had all my panties out the window there to dry. When the thief came and took them! My favorite panties! Why is there a dog? <laughs> I ran after him. Give those back! I shouted. Wait! <laughs> this is crazy. Well, that was certainly brave of you. But 
I lost him. Without those pennies, I don't know what I'll do. A darn crying shame, yup. Well, at least the scene of the crime is convenient. I'll mark it on your map. These these cases are gonna be connected, huh? I'll be heading home now. Remember, find my stand or there's an empty bowl in your future, boyo. Alright. And you help out Trucy Doll here too, you hear? Things have certainly picked up, haven't they? Uh, have they? We had no work yesterday, and now we have three cases! I... I guess... Let's see where we stand. Not in a courtroom, that's where. Well, uh, the first item on our list... Phoenix Wright, Daddy's hit and run accident. He has to find the one who hit him. Who's going to pay us for this again? And the second item, Mr. Eldoon's request to find his stolen stand. For which we stand to gain a bowl of salty noodles. And the last request is mine to find my stolen pennies. That bowl of noodles is looking better and better. Let's go, Polly! To the streets! Aren't you enthusiastic? How could I not be? Let's crack these cases, you and me! <sighs> Guess we might as well get started. Let's see. A hit and run, a stolen stand. And last but not least, stolen panties. I'm really nailing this. I feel his energy. I feel so connected to him right now. Yeah, what the? So this is where Mr. Wright got hit by that car? According to the map, this is the place. What a huge mansion. Apollo! There's a nice looking lady over there. Let's question her. Uh, okay. I'm a little curious about... What? The park over there, too. <laughs> what is going on? Why is there that guy there? <laughs> Excuse me, uh, can we have a few words with you? You want something? Whoa, that... Hu oh, husky voice. Why am I suddenly sweating? Yo, husky? What's husky sound like? What's husky sound like? Ow, ow. <laughs> That's quite a house you've got there. Ow, ow. <laughs> you must have a lot of money. Ooh, money sounds like something my son would call his friends. Deep and rusty. <sighs> Sm Smokerish? I don't smoke. I don't know how... Uh, how uh. This is the Kataki family mansion, little girl. Eh. You, kid with the hair, you want something? Uh, me, me! No, nothing! Bye! Apollo, we can't leave without questioning her! What if she knows something? But the, the, the Kataki family! They're the biggest organized crime syndicate in town! If you're going to ask something, ask it. If you're mad enough. Ah, right! Yay! Way to whip him into shape, ma'am! Does she know no fear? I'm Plum, Plum Kitaki, wife of the fourth head of the Kitaki family business. Friends call me Little Plum. I'm Little Apollo Justice, uh, attorney at law. If looks could kill, this woman would be a mass murderer by now. Sheesh. The Katakis. Just reminds me of Takis, you know. Little Plum? Uh, that's a really cute name for someone so... Yes. <laughs> Whoa! What is it, Apollo? How about you go through me when talking to her, okay, Trucy? Huh? That seems 
like a bit of a needless procedure. I'm a lawyer. Only for needless proce procedures. <laughs> oh, little girl, you should know. We're gangsters. Oh, that means you're the bad guys. Josie, through me, please. I'm begging you here. The bad guys. I like the sound of that. I'm going to need some warm tea after this. It takes a lot of hard work to protect a family fortune. Things aren't as easy as they used to be for us bad guys. So you're saying that business is in a slump? Let's not ask about business if we can't help it, please. <laughs> That's crazy. So, there was supposedly a car accident here last night. Last night? Well, of course you wouldn't know about it. Sorry but to bother you. Wait. I yes? You're talking about that man, aren't you? The one who flew 30 feet and just walked away? <laughs> I should have known. One of our couples thought he'd make a great point man. Couple? Point man? Uh, could you avoid using too much uh, industry lingo? In any case, it's been nothing but trouble. I've been cleaning up this mess since morning. Bah. Cleaning up this... Uh, paint? Was this paint spilled at the time of the accident? It was around 9 last night, I heard a crashing noise and found your father drowning in a sea of paint. So you came to his rescue? You've my husband, the boss, to thank for that. The car that hit your father knocked over this paint, then turned the corner and sped away. We're in the middle of repainting our wall, you see? I'm sure that dragon is glaring at me. <laughs> but why are you out here cleaning it up? What do you mean? I mean, aren't you a gangster? Don't you have any goons to do your dirty work for you? <laughs> Please, go through me when you want to. <laughs> I don't be such a stiff lawyer, boy. I suppose we gangsters do have a certain image. Uh, yes. But we're community-oriented gangsters, you see? The boss likes to give back to the people, see? How noble of him. I availed myself to the public facilities to get rid of all the garbage. Huh? No, there's just the paint on the street to deal with. Public facilities? I wonder if she means that trash can. Alright... Um... Let's see. I took them up there. Uh oh. Uh, how do I? All right, sticker. A daughter. Who's that? She is looking at the park. She's pretty. I bet she has a story. You know. There is something about her. Too bad she seems to be in a bit of a rush. Oh, okay. Looks like there's some trouble by the park gate. I smell an incident! Ma'am, there's no entry to the park! Now don't you tell me where I can't go, young fella! I always walk through this park on my way home! Please, get down from there! You'll hurt yourself, ma'am! That's quite the determined old lady. Personally, I'm a little more interested in this park. You know what I think? If they're filming a movie. Let's go take a look. Maybe we'll see someone famous. Oh, no. Hey, miss. Stay out of the park. He got mad at me. Uh, did something happen here, officer? Huh? Oh, oh, no. Move along. Nothing to see. Why don't you kids go play someplace else? We're not kids and we're not playing. I'm an attorney. Something wrong? Oh, Detective Sky! <gasps> Sky? We're fine, ma'am. Nothing to report. <gasps> Ayo! This theme sounds familiar. Am I hearing things? 
Why is she wearing a lab coat? You're hardly one to comment on how people are dressed. And these kids are? Curiosity seekers, ma'am. They claim to be lawyers. Ah, why didn't you kids run along and play someplace else? Look, we're not... Or I might spill something on that pretty face of yours. Like what? <laughs> One of those of experimental hydroxy... Hydroxychlenodostrase. Awesome. Nailed it. Come again? What's hydroxy stuff? Whatever it is, it doesn't sound good. Let's go, Trucy. Try to keep out the riffraff, if you would. Yes, ma'am. <sighs> How are we going to get more information like this? Why don't we ask that nice woman across the street? Oh, yes, that nice woman. <laughs> Yo, where's the nice lady? The nice lady's gone. Oh, she's not gone. Can I ask you a question? What? What happened in the park across the street? Oh, yes, quite the commotion. Chicago Lightning, as the boss would say. Chicago? Huh? Gunfire. Someone was killed. Strange circumstances, too. You're kidding! What a morning. Trouble everywhere. The park, the gate, even our house. Did something happen at your house too? A crime without honor, without remorse. It's a private matter. Want to hear about it? Somehow I don't think no is an acceptable answer, Polly. So, what happened at your house? Bloomers, last night. Bloomers? Like panties? I got a bad feeling about this. Me, little plum Kitaki, the victim of a panty snatcher. Oh, she's also a victim. What? So it wasn't just my panties that were stolen? Caught you too, did they? Poor thing. Like I said, whoever did this is a hardened criminal. It wasn't you, was it? No, 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 of course not. Mercy! I've heard word that panties have been disappearing lately. And the missing panties all have something in common. It's hard to imagine Trucy's and Mrs. Kitaki's panties having much in common. I just imagine Mrs. Kitaki's panties. Ugh. I know! We'll find your bloomers too! No! Trucy, no! Great! Show me what you're made of. What have you gotten me into this time, Trucy? Are you the thief? That girl from before. Oh, welcome home, sweetie. Oh, is it the daughter? Uh, uh hello, mother. She's a Kitaki, too? Uh, um, miss, miss! Hmm? Here, our flyer. The, the right anything agency? <laughs> anything agency? Yeah, do you like the new flyer? So, uh, this is our defense attorney, Mr. Apollo Justice. Attorney? Drop by our office. We'll be waiting. Ah, uh, goodbye. Piano, ma magic, and defense. Why did you give her our flyer? I don't know. She seemed like she could use some help. She's the heiress to a gangster dynasty. She doesn't need our help. I wouldn't be so sure. Huh? Ah? Uh. Sorry, kid. I got no idea what you're talking about. Okay, doesn't care about the badge. Of course. Uh, let's try examining this trash can. Ooh, there's something in it, though. There's a big trash can on the way into the park. I guess we could check it out. A detective's life sure is a hard one. I'm an attorney, actually. Huh? Two pieces of garbage with paint on them. These are slippers. Maraktis Clinic! They look like those slippers you get at the hospital. Look at this, Apollo! Isn't this 
go in a car? Ah, Cachaspion! It's a side view mirror! Looks like it was torn off and it smacked into something. Or someone. Wait, you don't think? I do. This could be from the car that hit Mr. Wright. Wow, and he took off its mirror? I never knew Daddy was so strong. I only have room in my pocket for one of these, though. Which do you want to take? I'll take the slippers first. I gotta say, I'd really like to know what happened here. Hey, I said no one goes in, unless you want a face full of hydro... No dice. Okay, he doesn't know. What if we switch to the other one? Does she know? Okay, should I swap? Yeah. Let's swap and present. Maybe she maybe she can confirm or something. And if not, let's move. Can you tell me anything about this mirror? That's probably from the car that knocked that fellow across the street. Right, that makes this a valuable clue. Let me know if you find that car, would ya? You splash Kentucky paint, you pay the price. Alright. So... Alright. So maybe we could, um... There's paint splashed all over this gate. What a mess. Was this paint knocked over by the car that hit my daddy? That's right. <laughs> and I'm left to clean up the mess. If you find whoever did this, bring the scoundrel by, would ya? Of course! They can make them clean up their own mess! Ha 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 ha! You're cute. Naive, but cute. When I find whoever did this, you can bet I'll be doing some cleaning. <laughs> There's nothing I dislike so much as a mess. Ooh, wish I could say cool things like that. I'll uh, bet you do. <laughs> I laugh if my teeth were chattering so hard. Damn. A brightly painted dragon. Why do I get the feeling he's glaring at me? Those paints must have been to repaint this wall. That's right. I called in an artist. Uh, I called in an artist to do the job right. He's the third so far. Oof. The third. The first spilled paint all over the entrance here, the second on my kimono. So I... No, don't tell me. It's better that I don't know. <sighs> wow, what a big house! And the gate is so big! The Kataki family is pretty big around these parts. I like the fox! It's so cute! Ah, uh, that. That's our family crest from the old country. Your family crest? We're clever as the fox, and our teeth are sharp. So it's like a motto! You need a crest too, Apollo! Ooh, how about the scales of justice? Or a lunar lander? I'll pass, thanks. Um, give me a sec. Who's here? Beach? It's cut clean off. I wonder what's in there. Don't. There are bare wires hanging out. Let's see. Are you okay? <laughs> Just a little joke. Don't scare me like that. You mean don't shock you? Zap! <laughs> Maybe we come. We can swap. This, hold on. There's some paint on the slippers in this trash can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Swap. If you want, Rhino. Maybe something. Ah! Oh! 
The bottom is covered with paint. Huh? What's this weird shape here? It looks like a leaf was stuck into the bottom when the wearer stepped in some yellow paint. So the outline was left and the leaf was removed. I got paint on my hand! Apollo! I saw you try to wipe your hand on my cape. <laughs> That's crazy. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Well, let's uh, actually move to the um, stand that scene. So, what's this place? This would be Mr. Eldoon's house, silly. Oh, so this is where his stand was stolen from. No! <laughs> I can see a picture of evidence lying on the ground already. Hey! <gasps> there it is! Look! There's a police car parked over there! You're right! What's with the sparkly... entrance? What is this place? A hospital? Marak mentioned! There's a sign. Maraktis Clinic. Oh, that's where the thief went. The thief? The one who stashed my panties! He ran to this clinic last night! Wait, maybe that police car is here to find my panties! I doubt it. Well, there's only one way to be sure. Let's investigate. Ah, there you are, Sonny. Oh, it's Mr. Eldoon. Well, you find anything yet? Uh, uh, no, not yet. Do -do 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 -do. The longer you loaf around here, the saltier your victory bowl gets. Just remember that. This bowl of noodles is sounding less like payment and more like punishment. But I want to go here first. <gasps> oh, this is the place. This is where that panty snatcher ran. <clears throat> Are you sure? Maybe. Let's look for clues. Clues to a panty snatching. Clues like a pair of panties. Uh, Trucy, could you try not saying panty so many times? Ooh. There's a car. And there's a car. And there's a human body, and there's a human body. There's so what is this? Whose trap is this? There's something about this car. Let's take a closer look. Ooh. Look, a cell phone. Someone dropped it beneath this tire. If the car moved, it would be crushed for sure. Hmm, I wonder if it belongs to the doctor here. We should bring it to him later. Okay. And there's something here. That reminds me. I once read a record of a case that Mr. Wright worked on many years ago. Or was it Lana's case? Apparently, there was this car with a piece of cloth shoved into the tailpipe. That piece of cloth turned out to be a vital clue to solving the case. Wow! I remember that case record whenever I'm checking out a car. And I always check the tailpipe. Everyone's gonna have a hobby, I guess. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if... Hey! There's something in there! What? Wait a second! Are these your... Oh... Uh... Ah! My panties! What? Already? Wow, thank you, Apollo. You're a genius. Amazing. No, no, really. Don't mention it. No, I'm serious. I'm really impressed. You must have a nose for finding girls' panties. <laughs> Bro, what? Uh, what are those? My little panties, of course. They've come home to Mama. I can't wait to use them. You're going to put them on? Now? 
closely now. See? Nothing in the panties. Ta-da! Whoa! Where'd that come from? How did that bowl get in your panties? Anjir, ada mangkok di kolornya. My panties are an extra dimensional space. Anything can fit in there. They're my magic panties. It's one of my best tricks. Magic panties? They love them over at the Wander Bar. How to show their nightly? You mean those panties are a prop? You could have told me a little sooner! Okay. Well, that's one case closed at least. What are you saying? We still have to catch the sly devil that ran off with the tool of my trade. Oh, right. Something tells me we're not finished searching this garage anyway. Look at that! The mirror's been broken off! Now this is a clue! What? You're smiling like you know something I don't! You aren't keeping a clue from me, are you, Polly? A clue? Let's see... Oh, hold on. No evidence. Mm, not that I can think of. No? Then what were you smiling about? Oh, I wasn't smiling. I was the dust in here. I thought I was gonna sneeze. Ah, uh, ah! Uh. Uh, what? Well, don't make that. Ah, you are so misleading then. I know yawns are contagious, but sneezes? Mm, well, I'm sure there's gonna be a clue somewhere. Let's keep checking things out. Alright. Let's do that later then. Oh, it's just a gold-painted human skeleton. Just a human skeleton and painted gold? There's a mannequin hand waving to us from the box behind the skeleton. This place just screams hospital storage, don't you think? It screams something, that's for sure. Yo, what up, car? Hey, a kitty cat! Here, kitty, kitty, kitty! <coughs> Cute. It's not coming down. We do look kind of suspicious, you have to admit. It's okay, kitty cat. His hair won't hurt you. <laughs> it's okay, kitty cat. She won't make you disappear in her hat. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Can we lure the cat with something, actually? There's something about this car. Let's take a closer look. Oh, nanti belum. Udah ntar aja nanti, anjing. Oh, uh, hold up. Alright, let's talk to him first, actually. So, your stand. El Dune's noodles, was it? Hey, pass down from father to son. That stand's seen its share of salt. Mm hmm. Salt runs in the family, you might say. I bet high blood pressure does too. So, your stand, Eldun's noodles, was stolen. Yo, it wasn't just the stand that was stolen, sonny boy. I lost those wobbly wheels, my salt-crusted stew pot, my stained sign. I didn't just lose the stand, I lost a legend. No one steals a legend and gets away with it on my watch. Let's find that legend, Apollo. Isn't it about time he bought a new one anyway? What about the stolen stand? Are there any more details you could give me about the stand? You bet, sunny boy! It happened last night. I was blowing my whistle like always, crying the town I was. The smell of broth filled the streets, thick and salty. I got home, well, right before 10 p.m., I reckon. Guess he's not aiming for that late night market. I washed my bowls and gave the wheels a squirt of grease. Then I went inside. When did you notice it had been stolen? Early this morning, before the sun rose. Work starts early. Do that many people eat noodles for breakfast? I'm washed up on the salty shores of ruination. 
That sand had my whole life in it. Nay, my whole being. They took everything? Oh, my soup stock, my noodles, my bowls, and my dreams! At least they left one bowl. Look! There! On the ground! If you don't find that stand today... Then I'll be forced to walk the streets peddling that bowl! My last bowl! Please, I'm under enough pressure here as it is! That's it! That's where the thief who snatched my panties ran to! It's a crying shame, that is! If they have to steal, make it my loincloth, not some pretty girl's panties. I... I... what? The garage, right? You don't think the thief lives there, do you? Heh! I wouldn't put it past that good-for-nothing doctor. Hmm, do I detect a little animosity here? Let's make sure to check out that garage thoroughly. Right. Let's examine these stuff. Oh, hi, doggy! Wow! Look, a doggy! Good boy, good boy, Salty. That's his name, Salty? I'm sure the dog has a real name, Trucy. <laughs> yep, sure does. Name Spoon. And it's a she, by the way. Spoon doesn't seem so lively. She didn't get her bowl of salty broth this morning, that's why. Poor little thing. <gasps> Apollo, let's find that stand soon! For Spoon's sake! I'm pretty sure dogs aren't supposed to eat noodles. Or salty noodles, or salty broth. That's the place, right there. That's where I kept my stand, covered all nice and pretty with the blue tarp there. So you use this plastic sheet to cover your stand at night. I see. You see? What? Did you figure out why it was stolen? Well, no, but it does suggest that the thief knew what he or she was looking for. They clearly knew what was under that sheet. So it wasn't one of those casual drive-by stand snatches, you mean? Not bad, Sonny Boy. Not bad at all. Right. It looks like the oil drum is connected to that sink over there. Collecting rainwater to do the dishes! How environmentally conscious! You don't think he uses rainwater to cook his noodles and to make the broth, do you? Oh, I'm sure he finds the best water money can buy. Taste is his business, you know? Look, that sign over there! Eldunes only uses water from all natural sources. I mean, rain is natural. I think I'll take a rain check on eating here. <laughs> There's a handwritten sign here. Save the lights. Save the light? Indeed. Mr. Eldoon's house is practically in the dark here. I guess the hospital clinic next door blocks the sunlight. Everything's gone wrong since they built this monstrosity. Broth needs sun or it rots. What's a man to do? They just want my customers to get food poisoning so they can turn pretty profit. <laughs> that seems like a lot of trouble to go through for a few extra patients. Right. This house is... Well, it's old. It's been well loved, that's for sure. I've lived here with my wife for many years now. It's got character, though. Just like my soup. I always thought character was a positive thing. <laughs> No! That's quite a sign. I take it that's no as opposed to old? <laughs> ah, you like it? Made it myself, I did. I meant to write noodles but ran out of space. Yeah. Prior planning prevents poor performance. Lucky for me, it spells the word all by itself and spruces up my image, it does, really. It does have a certain power of willful denial thing going for it. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Vote! Is this yours, Mr. Eldoon? Hey! That there's the heart and soul of Eldoon's noodles! The bowl absorbs my salty soup. Pretty soon it's gonna taste just like noodles. Wow, it does smell like noodles. All my other bowls got taken away with my stand. Get it back for me, sonny boy. I'm begging ya. All right, I'm gonna examine everything. Oh! Anjira di cap kaki buset! Huh? This spot here is black. Ew! 
That means he was barefoot and then he put on the sandals. It doesn't look like paint. That means he had gross feet. Disgusting. Look at this cute little watch trap. I want one. It's kind of odd though. What is? I mean, if you wanted to know the time, you could just look at the phone itself. Hey, you're right! Sharp, Apollo! Uh, thanks. Finally, some respect. <laughs> so, what does that tell you? The person likes watches for aesthetic purposes? Well, the owner of this phone doesn't think through the details, for one. Respect their aesthetic choices, Apollo. They did drop their phone, after all. I kind of figured they were a little spacey already. Oh, good point. Okay, nothing else so far. What about the panties? Um... Something the matter? Uh, I was just wondering if there was, like, a switch on these. Of course not! Oh, mysterious. Oh, do you want to know the secret of my panties? No, no thanks. Here's this magic panties in a stage show anyways. Um, okay, there's nothing, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, so... Ah, what's this? Oh, look! I love these little personal touches. Seems a shame to hide it on the bottom of the bowl. Huh? When I touched it, the paint flaked off. I must have painted it on with by hand with warm, professional care. After buying the cheapest paint he could find with cold professional thrift. <laughs> Sheesh. It's the Eldon's Noodles mascot. Mr. Salty, he's so cute. It's not a very endearing mascot, is it? You know, come to think of it. It looks a lot like you, Apollo. Especially the red parts. What? Can I help it if I like red? It looks like he's in pain. Or maybe it's upside down. Um. If it's upside down, it looks like a tanuki. Or a raccoon. <laughs> anyway, um... I'm gonna go back. Sorry, Sunny Boy, my interest is for my stand and precious stuff. Get cracking, find my stand. Um, let's talk. No, no, let's move to the park. Dune house. And then we're gonna move to the garage. And then we're gonna examine this car. There's something about this car. Hey, look at that! The mirror's been broken off. Now this is a clue. What? Let's show the evidence. I think I do have just the clue you've got in mind. This. My clue is... This! Whoa! It's the same color and size and everything! A perfect match! I guess we could check it out. Hmm, two pieces of garbage with paint on them. Look at this, Apollo! Doesn't this go in the car? It's a side view mirror. Looks like it was torn off and it smacked into something. Or someone. Well, looks like we've just sold a case. So the car that hit daddy last night? is sitting right in front of us. Yep. 
Wow, you put the pro in professional, Apollo. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Trucy. Apollo! Huh? What is it? Now that we've solved this case, we should go report to Daddy. Don't mop if you leave him alone too long knowing him. Uh, okay. He doesn't seem the type to mope, though. This is hardly a case worth reporting. Ha <sighs> ha. Alright. Kitty! Kitty cute! Cute kitty! Alright, let's move to the hospital. Um, here, I would guess. Ugh. Really don't feel like going here. Huh? Mr. Wright's gone. Maybe he's gone for an examination? He'll probably be back soon. Let's wait. I think it might take some time. Daddy always loves his examinations. What? 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 Don't ask, Justice. You don't want to know. Why don't we come back later? Yeah, I guess you're right. Is it, huh? <laughs> this 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 game is so weird. What? You want to see them again? Well, if you must. No 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 no! I'm fine, really. Let's just put them away, shall we? Case closed. What are you talking about? The case isn't closed until we have our thief. Just find him on the side while you work on the other cases. If it were that easy, we wouldn't need the police. If we don't need the police, then we don't need defense attorneys either, right? Fine, fine. I'll look for your panty snatcher. Any leads? Yeah, we could ask. Do we have any leads? Oh, one moment. Alakazam! Alakazing! Whoa, where'd all this evidence come from? Uh, so what happens next? That's it! Pretty neat, huh? Yeah, neat. <laughs> Crazy. <sighs> Incident and go. Doom's house. So this person, boom, from Kitaki Mansion, and and then something happened. The panty stolen, and then they parked in El. Do Do mm -hmm. We know too little. We know too little still. Eto, edosho. No, 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 Should we swap now? Because we already presented the evidence. Okay. Huh? You aren't going to search through the trash? I don't think we need to. Oh, no, please, knock yourself out. Don't mind me. I'll be waiting over here. Just so we're clear, searching through trash isn't a hobby of mine, okay? Oh, okay. We are... Okay, so the the Maractis thingy is a little bit of a red herring. Well, not completely, but we didn't really need to bring those. Present the panties? We can. <laughs> nah, she doesn't care about love panties. Okay, she doesn't know about anything. Uh, I'm gonna move to El Dune House. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sunny boy. Okay, he doesn't care. It's not his phone. What about the panties? He doesn't care about the panties either. You can tell my balls by the Mr. Salty logo. The mascot of El Dune's noodles. They come to the stand, they sit, they drink deep from that bowl, and when they see the bottom, their face looks just like Mr. Salty's is. Ha! Genius, no? I guess. Very high concept. 
You can't apply a trade if you don't love the tools. Remember that. Yes, sir! Trusty has a thing for professionals, clearly. How old is she? 15? Anyways, we haven't really examined this section of the map. Um, I'd understand if there was an ambulance outside, but a police car? Maybe they're tax evaders! <laughs> oh, sorry, miss. No going into the clinic today. Eh, no, no. Did something happen? Huh? Oh, no. Nothing to see here. Move along. You'll have to find someplace else to play doctor. Do we look like the right age to be playing doctor? We need a little more info on this Maractis clinic. You could ask Mr. Eldoon. Is their neighbor and all. And we should check out that garage. How old is Nick? Uh, Nick is 33. In this game. Um, what if the thief who stole my panties is still in there? <sighs> um, three shots for the price of one. Looks like they have a special offer going on. Three shots for the price of one! Ooh, now's our chance, Apollo! Chance for what? I don't need any shots, thank you. Whoever runs this clinic, they seem pretty business-minded. Um, alright. That doorway sure is sparkly. The Maractis Clinic, huh? It looks more like a casino parlor than a hospital. Well, what if it's... What if the hospital is just a front? <laughs> they must be quite profitable. Funny, it looks closed. Maybe they're on vacation today? Uh huh. Okay. What do I do? There's really nothing. This car belongs to someone at the Maraktis clinic and it hit Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright sprained his ankle and the car lost a side view mirror. This car versus Mr. Wright. Not quite the match of the century. <laughs> what the hell? Oh. Look! It's a folding ladder. <laughs> folding ladder now. Polly! That's called a step ladder. Come on! A step ladder? How is that different from a regular ladder then? It's a much more complex piece of machinery. It's like two ladders stuck together. So you admit that basically it's a ladder, right? Wait, huh? You have to look past the form at the essence of the thing. Uh, can we talk about something else? <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah, there's nothing else to check here. But um, now I'm curious. What should I do? Just wait, the exam is not Move. 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 A bottle of Mr. Wright's favorite brand of grape juice. After the trial, I'll never drink grape juice again. Clearly not a problem for Mr. Wright, however. Mr. Wright's bed. What a mess. Trucy must be in charge of cleaning at home. The television's been left on to an episode of The Seal Samurai. Looks like the same episode as before. Must be his favorite. Okay. Hmm? A small children's piano. I guess the man likes pink. I guess so. I guess so. Um. A blue silk hat, just like the one Trucy is wearing. Oh, that's just for show. Don't worry, please. Last off from my mind, honest. I put it in there so clients can see it and know who I am. Nothing says magician like a silk top hat. Right. A strange split box leers at me from the wall. Uh, is this one of those boxes for cutting people in half? That's right. This cabinet is used for an illusion called the zigzag. I've 
seen one on TV. But why is one just sitting here in the office? Oh, it's a little big for me, you see. Uh, so I'm using it as furniture. Hats at the top, shirts in the middle, and pants down below. I think it's a nice touch, don't you? That's not exactly what I'd call a welcoming decor. That table doesn't look very sturdy. You've never seen one of these. It's a magic table. So, like, you make this teapot disappear? So you might think, but that's not it. Before your very eyes, the contents of the pot change. From Earl Grey to Darjeeling. Kinda hard to see the difference, I think. <laughs> nice. That's one of those hula hoop things everybody was crazy about back then. Really? I had no idea these were that popular. I'm not so bad with one myself, actually. Eh? I'm still learning. So you can really make someone levitate with it? Show me! Huh? I have no idea how. It's just a normal hula hoop, isn't it? Whoa, that fork is floating! Not. Why do you have a plate of plastic spaghetti here? That right there is the whole reason I became a magician! Do tell. I saw a plate just like that in a restaurant once. The floating fork looked so real. That's when I knew. Someday, I'd make magic more amazing than that spaghetti. That's not a very high bar. There are all sorts of strange paraphernalia sitting on top of the piano. Those are my magic props. Practice, practice, practice. The professional never leaves their weapons far from reach. But you can play the piano with all this junk on it. Oh, no one plays here anyway. And the neighbors complain. I guess Mr. Wright really can't play. <laughs> Y'all what? Who this? An old sepia-tinted photo of a man in a silk top hat. That's my favorite magician! I want to be just like him someday! You guys look alike. Sure, nice. Guess it's good to have a role model. Even if it's gotta be well over a hundred. How rude! All these legal books must be Mr. Wright's leftovers. There's a lot of unrelated books in there, too. One trick a day. Magic for idiots. You'd think a pro magician would aim a little bit higher. <laughs> ah! Don't touch Mr. Charlie! Mr. Charlie? He's been in this office much longer than I have. Daddy's mentor had a great fondness of Mr. Charlie. Mia? He's lived here since Daddy was a rookie attorney. Aww. Huh, Mr. Charlie. Right. No, I take care of him. Okay, Mr. Charlie. Awesome. Cool. Um. So I think we've uh, checked out this whole the whole contents of this place actually. Oh, I've seen one of those before. That's an attorney's badge. It looks just like one Daddy used to have. Now if I take this badge. And do this, and this. See? It's gone! Hey! My badge! What you do with my badge? No need to worry. Just look in your pocket. Huh? No way, my pocket? Wait a second, there's something in there. Uh, it's a flyer for your agency! And here's your badge. You can have it back now. <laughs> That's the last time I let her touch anything of mine. Period. 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 Um, is Phoenix back? No. What makes me impatient is that I have to wait. There's there's this small buffer time. He doesn't care about anything. What they are at? This wasn't here before. Hey, do you think something happened next door? There's a police car out front. <laughs> Probably gave someone food poisoning, I'll bet. 
If anyone's at risk of giving anyone food poisoning... The police car got here this morning, actually. I asked what they were up to, but they wouldn't even tell me, the neighbor. <laughs> hmm... Not that I was surprised much. The doctor works for the wrong crowd. It was just a matter of time before he got what he was coming to him. <laughs> the wrong crowd? Never you mind about that. Alright. Ah, <sighs> now is Phoenix back? No, actually, let's check. It's Phoenix. I feel like what's annoying is the wait time. Uh, the wait time in between loading, because we didn't have in the old game. I think it just takes longer in general to load. Uh, because the game is ha has better... I don't know. Like... Th this used to load instantly. And now I have to wait for a little bit. Oh, it has that blinking animation that we have to sit through. Ah... No, 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 no. It has the... Once we select a place... It has this blinking animation that we had to sit through compared to the old game where you just where you just like blop, you know. Ah, なるほど Yeah, see that animation? Ah, okay, now we can check it out. Yo, how goes it? Daddy, how do you feel? Not bad, Trucy, not bad. It's good to have you young ones on the case. Let's old daddy o get some well-deserved R&R. The elderly need their rest. <laughs> uh, isn't he only 33? Uh, we've cleared up most of the cases. I was right about you. Competent. Capable. Tell me what you found out, if you want to. Your enthusiasm is overwhelming. <laughs> Well, I certainly didn't expect you back this early. Polly's amazing! He found my panties so quick! Almost like he was the one who stole them. You have an interesting concept of praise. And? Did you find the mad driver who gave me that 30-foot toss? Apparently, it was a doctor. From the Maraktis clinic. Hmm, Maraktis, eh? I've heard of him. Nothing good, mind you. That reminds me, a police car was parked outside the clinic. Maybe something happened? What is this Maraktis clinic anyways? All I've heard are the rumors. Maraktis is like malpractice. Mal... yeah, whatever. All I've heard are the rumors. I was gonna say practice is oh malpractice and practice, but I just remembered malpractice has practice in it. <laughs> that clinic's been making good money. In a bad way. Bad. Ties to organized crime, the Kentucky family, KFC. Um, the Kentucky. Oh, the Kentucky family. He did that on purpose. Some injuries you can't take to a public hospital. See. I use the Maraktis clinic for their patch-up jobs. Interesting. Then what about People Park? It looked like something had to happen in that park. Ah, a body was found there in unusual circumstances. Something more unusual than being dead? That's not our concern in any case. Right, let's ignore that and find that noodle stand. Whatever happened to professional curiosity? Thanks, really. If I get tired of sleeping, maybe I'll head down to the Maraktis place. Maybe I'll hit him up for some reparations. A little legal action would do me some good. Uh, I was wondering when I get paid. We solved the case of your accident and uh, found a missing article of clothing. My panties! That leaves the noodle stand. Eh. Feel free to drop in if you get stuck. I'd be happy to help with anything not involving money. <gasps> Yo, not involving money? That's what we need. Goodbye, quid pro quo. Hello, pro bono. <laughs> right, back to the office to plan our next move. Right. Oh! 
You're the woman from the Kitaki place. Yes. I knew it! Something's the matter and you want our help, right? Well, you've come to the right place. This way, please. Uh, thank you. My name is Alita Tiala. What? I have a request. Your request. Uh, let me guess. Something's been stolen. Um, your flyer. It says, now defending, so I thought... What? You mean, you want me... You, you want me to defend you? Me? Uh, maybe you can tell us what happened? Were you hit by a car? Did someone steal your stand or your panties? No, no. I'm not the client, actually. The client would be my... Well, my fiancé, I suppose you'd call him. Fiancé? What happened to him, then? He was arrested this morning. The charge was murder. Murder? Have you heard about what happened at the park? No. So, what's your story? You frequent the Kitaki Mansion, yeah? Are you a member of their, um, organization? No, uh, not yet. Not yet? You see, I'm to be married next month to the boss's son. Oh, look at me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she's not actually part of the main family. She's someone who's gonna marry to the family person. The boss's son. So he's a a, a gangster. Yes, but the Kitakis are locally responsible gangsters. I thought it would be nice for a change. Quit my boring job. Live the good gangster life. I think you're on to something. Mrs. Kataki. I like the sound of that. I'm not sure your daddy would care much for that. Okay, what about the murder in the park? Murder in the park. Ooh, what happened? I haven't been told all the details. But I do know a body was found in the park. Near the Kataki mansion. There were a lot of police cars there. Apparently, the victim was shot with a pistol. Three shots with the price of one. <laughs> Just kidding. But I hear the circumstances of the shooting were rather unusual. And your fiance was arrested for this? Uh, what sort of person is your fiance? Your fiance is the Kitaki family's only son, correct? His name is Waki. Walkie talkie. <laughs> yeah, what are these names? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Why has he got a blue badger shirt? The Skajang is pretty good though. Fox, and he's got that fox ear hair. Or whatever. I don't know. Well, that's quite the photo. I know. Oh, he can be powerful and missing. But so cute. But if he's the boss's only son... If he's dead... Yes, I'm sure he'll take his father's place someday. <gasps> oh my god, it's always the closest person probably. But if he's the only heir and then he gets in jail... <gasps> Say, I'm a boss already of this agency. Please help my walkie. Please. Right, my first solo defense case. Crime boss's son or not? I'll prove he's innocent. I prepared a letter of request. I know you need those. 
Uh, yeah, sure. Right! Let's go check out the scene of the crime. I mean, there's probably... <gasps> Hit through your... <laughs> Bro, what? Why does this envelope say hit request? <laughs> uh, it's a bit of lingo, like a call in a hit or a hitman. Ooh, you mean gangster talk? So, so does hit mean to defend in gangsteries? Well, hitman? I certainly hope not. Something tells me she used the wrong envelope. <laughs> the hell? Yo, there's a bike! So this is it. My first murder crime scene. Ah, it's you kids again. Look, can't you find some other place to play? We're not playing! We're, uh, investigating, aren't we, Apollo? Sir, I have a letter of request here. Letter of... Huh? Why does it say hit request on it? <laughs> Miss Tiala must have used the Kitaki stationery. Excuse me, coming through. Ooh! It's you, Mr. Gavin! Mr. Gavin? Mr. Gavin? Who's this guy? His brother? I must say I'm used to being inspected by the ladies. But this is the first time I felt this way with a man. What? What? Mr. Gavin? Yeah, I think his brother or something. Ah, how do you pronounce that word? What is a sweet morsel like you doing in such a dismal place? Can I help? Frau, fro, fro, fro. Can you, can you guys assist? Fro, fro, fro line. Yes! Fräulein. Fräulein. Right. Frauline. Um, the policeman officer fellow here won't let us in. Um, we even have a letter for of request. He must be exhausted standing out here. I will take you to the scene of the crime. Oh, really? By your leave, officer. Yeah, yes, sir. Well, of course, sir. Aha. Very well. This way, Fräulein. Whee! Hey, what about me? Cart? <laughs> Menu, ramen, 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 rice, ball. On that note, enjoy your investigation. Thank you. Will we see you again? Ask the wind, Fräulein. How are you riding on it? Who was that? Eee! Apollo, look! What? Hey, it's just a mannequin. Wow, it sure got me. <clears throat> Might I ask exactly what it is you're what it is you're doing here? Who's Oh! Hey uh Oh, it's you! How did you kids get in here? Oh, this guy, well, he was more like a prince, really. He let us in. Him again. That glimmerous fop. Always getting my my way. It's Emma Skype. <laughs> anyway, this scene is off limits. Excuse me? We have a letter of request. Hmm, one moment. Why is she holding that big magnifying glass? I recognize that handwriting anywhere. Scientific analysis says this was written by Alita Tiala. Thanks. It took you 30 minutes to figure that out? 30 minutes? So, 
So, what's up with the mannequin there? It's taking the place of the body, preserving the scene of the crime as it was found. Right... The body was pulling the stand? So, you're a defense attorney, are you? Detective Emma Sky, I'm in charge of this crime scene. She doesn't seem that happy about it. She doesn't seem that happy about many things. I trust you know how to stay out of the way. I always carry two pairs of handcuffs, just in case. Cool. Um, let's talk to her first, actually. Uh, Detective Sky? Quiet, please. It's snack time. What? Oh my god, she just like me for real, for real. Oh my god, she just like me for real. <laughs> We're not making much progress here. She must not be very busy. Hmm, I never seem to get a lucky break. Back after nine years, and they won't give me the position I requested. And then I hear he gave up the defense attorney life. He? Who's he? A next defense attorney? Huh. Uh, Detective Sky? Quiet, please. It's snack time. Oh my god. She's like me in the cereal. Oh my god. Okay. Mm, if you could spare a moment. Can't you see that I'm extremely, extremely busy? Eating snacks, yes. Busy eating snacks, I'd say. This is going nowhere fast. Okay. We need to make her cooperate. Did you know this is Mr. Right? This car hit Mr. Right? Let's examine stuff, anyways. Oh, what? Kitaki panties? No messing with the crime. Yeah, come on. Investigations are be to be carried out by professionals, scientifically. She's not going to let us check the crime. She looks so smug. The heck, girl? Is she? Hey, Apollo. My very unscientific analysis tells me something here is very suspicious. I think I know what you mean. It's kind of hard not to notice. I'd better check out what we came here to find, at least. This? Oh. What did we come here to find? Apollo, look! That stand! It says El Dune! I've noticed. Well, we've solved the case of the missing stand at least. Though the circumstances could stand to be better. Bye, Emma! I'm gonna tell El Dune that we found this thing. Oh, Mr. El Dune! Uh, hello? Looks like he left. Uh, and we found his stand and everything. What about our free bowl? Oh, too bad. Looks like we'll have to wait a little longer for that bowl. So sorry. Aw, oh, what a bummer. Oh, why is he gone? How come? Why is he gone? Ray, way, way. What about the... What, what's in the garage? Nothing in the garage. Yo, El Dune gone? <laughs> Mr. Right, help us! Huh, you're back. Run into some problems. Oh, Polly, didn't you want to tell Daddy something? Who, me? No, I'm fine, really. What's this? So there is a problem. No, no problem. Actually, I got a defense request. A defense request? That is a problem. Huh? I've given up the court. I'm not a lawyer anymore. 
The request was for me! Oh, right. <laughs> You're a lawyer, aren't you? He's doing that on purpose! I know it! Murder! I love it! So, what about this defense request? It's related to the murder in People Park, actually. Guess what? We found Mr. Eldin's noodle stand at the scene of the crime! Did you now? That's unusual indeed. Never heard of a noodle stand being used as a murder weapon. Uh, I think the murder weapon was something else. You mean you don't know what the murder weapon was? That funny detective lady won't let us on the scene! What kind of detective wears a lab coat anyway? A lab coat? Hmm, didn't think she'd be involved with this. You know her? You could say that. Sky Connection. So, you know her, don't you? Yeah, she's uh, CSI. CSI Japanifornia. I met her on a case. This was about 10 years ago. She was still a high school student at the time. That would make her about the same age as me. That's my daddy. He knows all the police types. Oh, wait. Maybe you know that other guy, too. That other guy? That shining prince on the motorcycle. Prince? Apollo, tell me about this prince of Trucy's. Indulge a concerned father. Uh, he was at the crime scene. He looked just like Mr. Gavin. Did he now? You know him? My guess is he's Christoph Gavin's younger brother. Yeah, brother, brother. His brother? We're acquaintances after a fashion. Clavier Gavin, a rock and roll god incarnate. Clavier... What a lovely name! He's so dreamy! I didn't know Mr. Gavin had a brother. Well, now you do. And what was he doing out there? I have a feeling you'll be crossing paths again soon. Oh, no. Now, what was the problem again? Having trouble investigating the crime scene in the park? Yeah, that detective woman won't let us! Go to the office. Under the silk top hat, you'll find a bottle of white powder. Try taking that to this detective. White powder? <gasps> I hope it's not what I think it is. <gasps> Just take it to her. It'll be fine, you see. Oh, and tell her I said hi. I remember what it is though, it's the the dust thing for the fingerprint, right? MSG. Bribing with MSG, that's crazy. Under the top hat, was it? Yeah. So this must be the silk top hat Mr. Wright mentioned. Let's take a closer look. <gasps> MSG? Whoa! You know what this is, Trucy? I remember finding some in daddy's dresser when I was little. I thought it was sugar, so I licked it. He got mad at me. What? This is getting more and more suspicious. Mysterious white powder with the alleged ability to improve Detective Sky's mood. I love the wording in this game. Let's go talk to that detective. She's sure to know what that white powder is. <laughs> Hmm, the bottle has a label on it. Can you read it? Uh, not a word. I'm not sure I speak whatever language this is written in. King of flavor, it says. That's too bad. I guess we're stuck with this mysterious bottle of white powder. Right. Alright, let's move to Katakimeoshium. And People Park. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, does this ring any bells? <gasps> oh, is that... It couldn't... Where'd you get that? I brought it from the office. You... You work at the Ride and Go Law offices, yes? Uh, yeah, sort of. Detective Sky, how do you know my daddy? Daddy? I'm sorry, who did you say you were? 
Trucy Wright, Phoenix Wright's daughter. What? Mr. Wright has a daughter? <laughs> Everybody's just shocked. You seem shocked. Well, if you're Mr. Wright's daughter and you're his apprentice, then I'm available to help you in any way I can. Oh, uh, thanks. You can start by not calling me Mr. Wright's apprentice. This powder is used for detecting fingerprints. Fingerprints? I guess you might call it a memento. From the time I spent with Mr. Wright. White powder memories. <laughs> mm, memories of MSG. If you find any evidence with fingerprints on it, please let me know. I love... <laughs> this game is insane. This game is so unhinged. What the hell? Will does for prints. Well, she's quite the eager beaver all of a sudden. <laughs> right. The report came in late last night. The body was found much as you see it now. Except it was a real body. But why? Why was the body pulling a noodle stand? If I knew the answer to that, I wouldn't still be here. Well, what was the cause of death? A bullet wound to the temple. He was shot by a pistol. To the temple? Huh. A pistol? Not the easiest thing to come by in this day and age. Unless you're a cop, or a gangster, or in... Japanifornia. Incidentally, the victim's name was Paul Palmaractis. It's malpractice! Bro, what? I just received the autopsy report, in fact. I mean, really? What's up with this case? It's enough to make me want to run off, pulling a mysterious noodle stand behind me. Not so mysterious, actually. We should tell her, Apollo. After all, we know where this stand came from. <gasps> a likely story. I didn't come here to play games, you know? Actually, we do know where the noodle stand came from. The noodle stand's owner is... Oh, he's 46 years old. Who's the old guy? This is the proprietor of Eldoon's noodles, Mr. Eldoon himself. He's famous in this part of town. Not bad. I guess Mr. Wright picked the right kids for the job. That saved me a lot of work. Thanks. Noodle stand added to the core record. Awesome. What sort of person was the victim anyway? You mean, what did he do? He was a doctor. A doctor? I'm starting to see a connection here. Who? Me? I'm just a supervisor for this crime scene. Man. Ah. Detective Sky. Hmm. I was out of the country for a while. I came back to be a forensic scientist. <laughs> Why does she look so smug? I'm not complaining though. Ooh, were you studying abroad? Something like that. I was studying in Europe. Forensic sciences, mind you. We're in Europe. But when I got back here, they threw me in criminal affairs. Just like that. Oh my god, is is he is she our gumshoe? Her um her inner coat, her inner vest reminds me of Gina, by the way. Gina from TGAA. Why didn't she just become a forensics expert in Europe? Well, I suppose that was an option, but... I had a lot of favors to repay to people back here. Favors? Wasn't she in high school when she left? What? What's that look for? I was involved in an incident before I left. She's the gumshoe for this game? Oh, I'm excited! Mr. Wright and his people helped me out. I owed them. Really? I had no idea. If she's been out of the country for a while... She probably doesn't know about Mr. Wright's current... Uh, 
state of affairs. Um, could you tell us a bit about the defendant? He's the only son of the Kataki family, yes? Wakitaki. I don't know if he is the boss's son, but he's certainly throwing his weight around. Violently. In the detention center. I see. Why was he arrested in the first place? You are a defense attorney, aren't you? You're not his... by any chance? Yeah, about that... Um... Uh, actually, yes I am. Well, we have a witness to the moment of the crime. <laughs> the witness called the police. He'll be testifying during the trial tomorrow. What? <sighs> oh my god. Could you tell us a bit more about the victim? Well, let's see. Apparently he's the physician at the clinic at the area. In the area. Quite well off too, from the sound of it. From which clinic? The clinic's name is... The Maractis Clinic. Hmm, maybe that's why the cop car was parked there? What? You've been to the clinic? Yeah, though on a related issue. I told the detective about the case of the stolen noodle stand. I see, so that means... Dr. Maractis stole the stand and pulled it all the way here? That's so weird. That would seem to be the case. Mm, but why? Don't ask me! Man, I can relate to Apollo so much. That's so crazy, okay. There's gotta be a good clue or two around here. You and your trash cans, go ahead, knock yourselves out. Please, can't you see I'm doing my... Huh? Look! Another pair of underwear! Wow, Apollo, you're a genius at finding pennies! Stop saying that. Wait, these aren't... They're not mine! Could these have been stolen too? Oh, plums, I guess. This mannequin is dressed up to look like a police officer. I've seen one at the station. A mannequin in place of a body. The body of the victim has already been removed. Do you think the victim was the noodle stand thief? What, you think someone killed him because he stole it? Yeah! Taking care of business, Little Plum Kataka style! Try not to sound too eager about that, please. <laughs> What's in this bucket, though? And this is Mr. L. Dune's noodle stand, obviously. It does say L. Dune in big letters, doesn't it? And that mark on his paper lantern there looks familiar. It's going to be a little weird telling him, what with the corpse and all. Anyway, that wraps up three of our cases. That's right! Congratulations, Apollo! It leaves us with one case that's worse than all three put together. <sighs> Murder. Oh my god. Well, I guess, um... Ah, an attorney's badge. Reminds me of when Mr. Wright was still defending. Everything I have now is thanks to him. Remember, help as many people as you can. That's your job. She's right, Polly! Let's make a difference! Is something wrong? Ah, uh, no, nothing. I actually felt inspired for a moment there. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what about his autopsy report? Time of death, June 14, after 10. So that's like 9.30. This was dropped before the murder. Single bullet to the right temple. Entry point, right temple. So only one shot. Damage to brain resulting from bullet wound. Between 10.15 to 10.45 p.m. He's 46 year old. The same age as the Mr. L. Dune. Uh, I want to go idol meeting. <laughs> Is there blood on here? <gasps> what is this? These bloomers should have a distinct design. You certainly know who they belong to at a glance. That way, she doesn't have to write her name on them. Genius! 
I would think writing your name would be easier than drawing a plum blossom. Okay, cool. Wait, can we actually... Yeah, we can check the... Oh, yeah. Oh, what's this unit? There's a number inscribed on the back of the badge. There are many numbers like it, but this one is mine. Proof that I'm an attorney. To tell the truth, I get a happy feeling inside just looking at it. Awesome. Cool. How old is Emma? 20-something, I would guess. Ah. Uh, anyways... Um... On it? Eh, inakune? Min. Wait, I want to move to Hickfield Clinic and I'm gonna idle meeting and then I will be back. I'll be back. I left some evidence. Okay, wait, um, we're gonna do that after I'm back. Yes, 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 yes. Eh, uh, I probably missed something at the park, huh? I need to return this to Kitaki. Uh, uh, a detention center! Let's go. Yes. Polly, you look as happy as a clam in a shell. <laughs> what does that even mean? For a lawyer, this is it. The place where the battle begins. Well, the, detec the detention center looks less gloomy than the previous game somehow. Maybe it's because there's no music. For now. <clears throat> you need something? Ah, yes! We're attorneys! Uh, I was hoping we could see Mr. Walkie Kataki. Sorry, he's in questioning right now. Could take a while. Drat. Oh well, guess we'll have to come back later then. So much for that battle. Alright, hold on. Let me, um... Move to uh, the park. On and I thought this was. I thought this was just a pole. It's a knife. A shiv, to be precise. Oh, a shiv! I know that word. Ooh, lingo. The defendant, Waki Kitaki, is the son of known gangsters. The police are assuming this belongs to him. Wait, but wasn't the murder weapon a pistol? Oh, look at this. There's a handprint on this shiv. A handprint? Then there might be a fingerprint. Let's investigate. Ooh, tutorial. Right. First, choose the fingerprint you want to examine. Choose a fingerprint. Look closely at the handle. Maybe the clearest one, I would guess. See? There's more than one fingerprint there. Those black spots? That's right. Pick the one you want to analyze. Um, this one. Right, let's get detecting. Wow, she's practically glowing with excitement. First, sprinkle some aluminum powder over the print. With a press of A, no. The oil left by the print absorbs the aluminum powder, so you just dust it on and blow it off. <laughs> blow? It's like whistling. You know how to whistle, don't you? 
Just use Y and... Wow, amazing! It's like magic! <laughs> Isn't it though? Right, let's give it a shot. Incidentally, it's important that you cover the entire fingerprint with a powder. Can I just hold? I can't hold, huh? Okay. Mudah bukan? Hmm, good, clear, quite impressive. Next, to match the print. The police office has samples so you can tell whose finger this print, be this print belongs to. That doesn't sound like as much fun as actually finding the print. Okay. Okay, pick the person whose print you think this is. You probably have a good idea whose knife this is already. Oh, A is... Yeah, it matches. Yes! So, the fingerprints do belong to the defendant. Yes, isn't it amazing? Ah, the power of science. It's my life. Apollo, she's... Sparkling. And I'm dimming. <laughs> I love Apollo. Look sharp, spirits up. The real fight is yet to come. Chin up, Polly! The trial hasn't even started and I'm already losing. Knife added to the core record. Awesome. So, have you met the defendant? Ah, uh, no. Visiting hours are almost over at the detention center. Think about wrapping up here and heading over. Good idea. I don't know what good it will do. We have a witness and a knife with prints. Have I mentioned I've got a bad feeling about this? Don't worry. It's like a right tradition. Some traditions I can live without. Yo, that's so creepy. <laughs> Why'd the music suddenly stop? Yo, what? Did you check the river? Whoa, what's in the river? Benches line at the river running through the park. Ah, a little urban oasis. I bet children come here to splash around in the water. <laughs> what? That river's a little deep for splashing. And a little dirty. Well, they could listen to the water and pretend they were playing. Uh, yeah, sure, Trucy. Sure. <laughs> Um, move to the detention center, because apparently Plum isn't here. I'm sorry, meeting hours for the day. What? But we still have three minutes! I'll put in your request, but don't expect anything. The father's talking in the private room with him. The father? You mean like a priest? <laughs> I mean the suspect's father, Mr. Winfred Bigwins Kataki himself. Not someone I care to meet. Die you! You're the one on your way out, old. Oh man, they're fighting. <sighs> ah, they're here. Here! Whoa, this guy radiates power. That's a nice apron, though. Reminds me of uh, that manga with the house husband. Power with a cute apron? You walkie lawyer? Yes, sir! Well, I'm Big Wins Kataki, fourth head of the Kataki family. Capish? Uh, actually, I came to speak to your son. <laughs> Mr. Justice. Yes? My son's innocent. He killed no one. If he were found guilty, it wouldn't be good. <laughs> yeah. Capish? Yes, I'm all about capiche, capiche, loud and clear. You gotta do more than just understand to make it. Damn. Uh, you'll learn, though. Even if the lesson comes at the end of your short life. Yeah, that's crazy. 
I don't feel so good. What's the big idea, old man? You can't treat me like a kid no more. Not now. <laughs> you know why? I... I wanted to go to the clink. I like it here. <laughs> Yo, he's such a tryhard. You, you must be walkie. A J is not a J until it does hard time. Bizoya. Bro, what? You'll see. When I get out of here, things will change. Silence! My apologies, Mr. Justice. He's usually such a nice boy. Forgive me if I have a hard time believing that. Ha! You can't take me under your wing this time, old man. You heard me? I don't need no trial. I did it! I think that's enough for today, Mr. Justice. Don't let me down tomorrow. So much for talking to our client. But we made so much progress today. We even found my pennies. I had fun at least. Of course, the biggest mystery of all remains. How am I supposed to build a case from the trial? Oh, almost forgot. It's time for my show. Tonight I'm performing at the Wonder Bar. You should come check it out. I... Yeah, about... I... Uh -huh. That's just my pen. Hi, 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 hi. Awesome. Uh, let's continue for now. Yo, I feel I connect to Apollo in like the deepest way possible. Like, what is this? Huh. Mr. Wright's not here today. He said his old foot injury was acting up. <laughs> what are you, Dr. House? Old injury? He was all smiles yesterday. Yeah, he smiled when he said he would be fine as long as you're there, Trucy. Yes, fine. We'll be fine. Here comes justice! I started my voice training at 5 this morning. Ooh, do some now. I want to see. Uh, here. Huh? Oh, okay. <coughs> my name is Apollo Justice, and I'm fine! That sounds more like a self-mantra than voice training. I'm fine, I'm fine. You know what I'm saying? G -g 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 Good morning! Yo, sup? Hit me with the guilty verdict, G. See if I care. <laughs> you just hang loose and let things go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not really. Walkie! Don't be running your mouth like that in here. See? That's the difference between me and you, old man. I ain't afraid of no cops. Real Gs can't keep it real till they spend some hard time in the pen. You have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Sounds like they've both been voice training too, Apollo. My worst fears realized. The trial's starting and I still haven't had a real talk with my client. <laughs> I want to cry for him. It's up all over. Court is now in session for the trial of Walkie Kataki. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ooh! Uh, Ready to rock and roll. Uh, how do you er uh, er uh, er? Uh, do you pronounce the H? And is it how do you pronounce that? Er, uh, judge. Ha! Huh. Ah, oh, it's him. The, the guy from yesterday. He's a prosecutor. It's Mr. Gavin's brother. Uh, 
A long time no see, Prosecutor Gavin. Were you taking a leave of absence? You know that little band I started in my free time? Thing is, we got very popular. I'd say nine to your fans when three of your singles go platinum, yeah? I see. To be honest, I was a little concerned. I feared that you might still be distraught over that one trial. Not to worry, Herr Judge. I wouldn't miss this day in court for the world. It's worth even more than a VIP passes to one of my concerts, yeah? How could I pass up a chance to see the true strength? Of the little boy who bested my brother. It was worth cancelling a show or two. Sheesh. Understood. You may give your opening statements to the court. Before that, I was thinking. Is the air in this courtroom not a bit... Serious? It is a court of law. That's no way to get the crowd jumping here, Judge. They're not supposed to jump! <laughs> this is a courtroom! Achtung, baby! Today, we played my way! What's that noise? Sometimes you have to get on up in order to get down to prosecuting! This is crazy! The victim, Pal Maractis, director of the Maractis Clinic. Marak mentioned, y'all. The scene, People Park. He was found pulling a noodle stand. What in the world was a doctor doing pulling a noodle stand? Ooh, nice music. Yes, I believe. You will only find it out by asking the defendant. Right here, right now. Because it's an undeniable truth. That he shot the victim. What do you mean, undeniable? If you are to glare at anyone, Herr Justice, glare at the punk in the defendant's chair. His crime was witnessed quite clearly, you see. Very well. Please admit this witness to the court. <laughs> For what? <laughs> That's a nice animation, though. Nine, not yet. First, there is a little matter to be cleaned up. Could you talk without the accompaniment? I swear I could see the guitar for a second. What is it, Prosecutor Gavin? The motive, Herr Judge. Why did the little punk do it? Why did he kill the director of the Maractus Clinic? Objection! Not so fast. The defendant doesn't have to explain that. Oh, but what if the defendant specifically requests to do so? As he did this morning. I wanna give a shout out to all my homies, I believe he said. <laughs> what? What? Exactly what? <laughs> what is right? They always say that. On stage, you should hit the crowd with speed and ferocity. Sounds like he got you good, huh, Polly? Well, this is highly unusual, but... The court will now hear from the defendant concerning his motive and the crime. <laughs> I've never acted... I've never felt like this in the first trilogy. So, you, son, are the defendant. Walkie, are you? I ain't your son, old man! You step to a kataki, you best be prepared to step strong. You step to a public official, you'd best be prepared to step into jail. That's what he wants, though. You gotta hand it to him, Waki sure has guts. Uh, it's not his guts I'm worried about. Well then, the court will now hear testimony on the defendant's motive. From the defendant himself. I'll tell you one thing, that doctor was a quacker! Someone had to show him what's what! I was in his clinic about half a year ago, he messed up my op something bad. And then he just lets me go, without a word. See you later, bye! So 
I gotta go in, get another dog to patch me up again. That was the day I done figured it out. No OG's gonna let that pass. That's why I went to his pad that night. Know what I'm saying? No? You're saying you were one of the victim's patients? A lot of stuff goes down when you're keeping it real in the street. True that. I tell you one thing, that duck was whack. Uh, very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. I can't believe this is the first time I'm hearing about all of this. The doctor was a quacker! First of all, the word you're looking for is quack. And isn't it a little harsh? He's your family doctor. Who asked you, pony locks? Just who do you think you are? You <laughs> are your lawyer. Uh, your lawyer? Look, I ain't trying to hear that. He was a quacker, plain and simple. Uh, by someone you mean... Uh, was there anyone with a score to settle with this doctor? Uh, besides you, I mean... You better ask somebody else, Holmes! What do I care? I made up my own mind and did what had to be done! Straight gangsta style! <laughs> but why were you so mad at this doctor? Yo, sit back and listen while I drop it, J-Man! It's Judge J Man. So you were a patient at the Maractus Clinic half a year ago? For what reason? I have what you might call a mark of honor. Can you explain precisely what was wrong? We had a little run in with the Rivalis family. Rivalis? Rivals? I don't know. That's when I pulled a jack move and ran into an ambush. She busted a cap right in me. According to my sources, you couldn't stand the stress of waiting and ran in 15 minutes before the appointed time by yourself. Hey, I was more than a match for those guys. <sighs> so you were carried to the Maractus Clinic from there. Apparently, he was shot in the heart. Shot in the heart and he's still alive? I can catch bullets between my teeth! <laughs> I didn't ask! But I never learned how to catch them with my heart! The bullets stopped just short of my thumper, you know what I'm saying? I would have been golden if it weren't for that whack dog! Can't even take out a stupid bullet! So, as you say, the surgery was a failure. That ain't all of it, Holmes! What do you mean he just let you go without a word? What do you think it means? It's whack, that's what! I'm not sure what that means, but it sounds bad. It sounds as though her doctor wished to hide his mistake. This is why he let the defendant go. He's a liar straight up! He's the better G than me! So this bullet is still... You know it? I can still feel it. Right there in my chest, pressing up against my heart. Your words are like a bullet shot straight into my heart. Or something to that effect. Incidentally, that's from one of our hit singles. Well, I get it, hit singles, just kidding. Well, that sounds like a straightforward case of malpractice. Word, J-Man. We're no accident, that's for shizzle. It seems that there were issues with this doctor. Man, putting him down was like doing the world a favor. <laughs> Wucky, please consult your lawyer before saying things like that. Chin up, Apollo. Back straight. But why did this mistake only come to light that day? It was found during the family health checkup. 
Is the family checkup? That was the wackest thing of all. All those G's lining up, taking nine exams and all that. Better to die young than fade away, bizoy! A relief to hear. Hey, what's the relief? Oh, did your father not tell you? That bullet you carry so close to your heart? If not attended to immediately, you will die. It could kill you. What? Yes, her Dr. Maractus had knowledge concerning this ticking time bomb in you. <gasps> For purpose? Knowledge that could have saved your life. No way, that's whacked! There is proof. Your checkup report. Huh. Not what all. How ironic that you would kill the man. The one man capable of helping you. You're almost as careless as he was. Urgent exam needed. <laughs> well, now that the place is hopping, let's get this gig started. This is started? We've had enough of a warm-up act, yeah? Time to hear from the witness. <laughs> Walkie sure is a quiet all of a sudden. I'm a little uneasy myself. Is this Gavin's strategy? What the? Well, who is this guy? So, you will tell us your name and occupation. My name is Wesley Stickler. By occupation, I take a profit site at large and supports livelihood, under which definition I must confess to being unemployed. However, we must acknowledge the meaning of identity, which is commonly attached to this notion of occupation. And once we have accepted this reality, we see that our confusion is not gestalt per se, but derives instead from the vagueness inherent in all representations of thought. By which he means to say that he is a student. A junior at Ivy University. Oh, Ivy University mentioned! If I'm not mistaken. Yes, in the Department of Science and Engineering. Filled with curiosity for all things, I spent many days in pursuit of truth, honing my... Her stickler, please direct said curiosity to the case at hand today. Very well, Mr. Stickler. Please testify to the court about what you saw on the night of the crime. You asked quite simplistically what I saw. However, I was understand that Homo sapiens possessed two eyes, of course, designed to receive and interpret data, sending images in the form of signals to the. Nice. That night, I passed through the park on my way home from shopping. When I saw them, one man pulling a stand, another man facing him. I saw them quite clearly. The man facing the victim was the defendant. In his hand he held, yes, a pistol, it was pointed at the man pulling the stand. A shot! The bullet hit the man pulling the stand from the front, square in the forehead. No, that doesn't match the autopsy report. Hmm, was there anyone else in the park at that time? I can say with 100% accuracy that there was not. The pistol our witness refers to is this. The court accept this into evidence. Pistol added to court record. Hi. Very well, Mr. Justice. You may cross-examine the witness. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Trucy? Who were you staring like that at the witness? That man. I can't help but feel I've seen him somewhere before. Huh? Is he the penny thief?
Phew. If that's all of it, I think I have a chance. Is that you relaxing, I see? Hair justice. Huh? Oh, uh... <clears throat> Objection! Once this quite enough, Mr. Justice. Apollo, pace yourself! This trial's not over yet! Uh, uh right. <clears throat> Look at this! The autopsy report? Is there a problem with the autopsy report? Uh, right. Uh, problem. Uh, problem, problem. Uh, yes! The problem is the location of the entry wound. Uh, the location? You testified that the killer shot the victim square in the forehead, did you not? Ah, I have already determined your angle of inquiry. Oh my god. Allow me to explain, it is quite simple really. First, understand that when I say square, I speak not of geometrical absolute. What I mean by this, for example, the defection of the meter is not the, the wavelength of the light emitted by a krypton particle as we all know. In addition, it is a well-known fact that krypton particles are rare and invisible to the naked eye, which points to a basic fallacy in your line of reasoning, namely that what Mr. Justice. Yes? Was your objection to these, uh, krypton particle things? This is the big time and you are obsessed with something so small? You disappoint me. No! I'm obsessed with something big! <laughs> what? I mean, there's a bigger, less nitpicky problem here. Do tell. Just report... Uh, just look at the autopsy report. Uh, the location of the entry wound was... The right temple! The temple? Mr. Stickler, you said quite clearly that the victim was shot square in the forehead. That's a contradiction, uh, isn't it? It is, right? Finally! Objection! Oof. Hair justice, oh, hair justice. Yes? Your tactics are outdated. Trying to shake the witness by objecting to trifles. Surely you haven't forgotten the fatal wound your master suffered seven years ago. Eh? What? Phoenix Wright, was it? Huh? Look, I know the wound was in the wrong place according to his this testimony. Nyark! <laughs> Nyark! <laughs> yes, her forehead? Forehead? Let us imagine you are walking through the park. You see two men facing each other, one with a pistol trained on the other. What would you do, hair forehead? Well, I... I would try to stop them. I'd probably shout stop. And you, Fräulein? Me, 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 me? Well, I'd probably scream. Ah! And you, Air Stickler? Why did you shout, I wonder? Duh! If the victim turned his head at the last moment... Ah, yes. Thank you for jogging my memory. It sounds like an addendum to the testimony is required. As soon as the killer raised his pistol, I took action. Seize this at once, you two! I cried with composure. He said calmly. The victim turned in the direction of my voice, and a shot rang out. Whereupon our cowardly killer, the defendant, appeared to have become frightened. Tossing the pistol aside, he fled from the scene. I see, so you attempted to stop the crime. Indeed, with composure. Well, maybe the criminal wouldn't have fired if you hadn't shouted like that. <laughs> That doesn't really matter now, unfortunately. Let us consider this new testimony, shall we? Observe the diagram, if you would. Oh my god. The witness, Mr. Stickler, was it? Stood here. He shouted, Oh, stop, please! Or something of this nature. And the victim responded by looking in the witness's direction. If the killer were to have fired at just that moment. As we can see, the bullet would have struck the right temple, as in the report. Huh. That does seem to be the case. 
witness the power of a junior in Ivy University's Department of Science. Very well, Mr. Justice. You may cross-examine the witness. <sighs> Hold it! So, you saw a raised pistol, weren't you, friend? It can be said we students of Ivy University know no fear. <laughs> the moment I saw that pistol, my inner sense of justice compelled me to take action. That was certainly brave of you. You might have gone shot. Eh? You certainly were lucky. If I were in the killer's shoes, I certainly wouldn't have left a witness behind. Mm. He actually looks like he had no idea he was in danger. Regardless, I attempted to halt the bloodshed. Are you sure both men were able to hear your voice? They were, of course. My high, exquisite voice echoed through the park. And the victim responded to that clarion call... Quite. Hold it. Did you hear the gunshot at the same time as the victim turned? Indeed, I would say about the same time to be precise. And the victim didn't ask you for help? It can be said that he didn't have time to ask. He didn't even have time to take a single step. I'm totally sure that the killer fired because Mr. Stickler startled him. <laughs> Don't say that too loud, Trucy, please. Can you describe the killer's actions more clearly? He seemed quite surprised, especially considering that it was he who did the deed. And so, as we can see, human psychology is a tangled web indeed. He simply couldn't believe what he had done. He shot, he panicked, a common tale, the truth. Unfortunately, before he could take further action... Tossing the pistol aside, he fled from the scene. You didn't try to apprehend the criminal? It all happened so fast, I'm afraid I hadn't the time. Doesn't something about that strike you as odd, Apollo? What? The killer was in a hurry, right? He fired the pistol and tossed it right away. According to the testimony, that's what happened, yeah. In that case, I'd expect to find something that we didn't find. Find something? Find what? I like that contradiction. Kinda sad to see it go. Not as sad as I feel. What do we do now? At least the testimony's getting a little clear. She's right. Maybe I can find something to use in this new testimony. Well, then who wiped the prince? Hmm, there's nothing here, okay. Yeah, there's... Okay, there's nothing here, yeah. Yeah, basically, two rounds were fired. Fingerprints were wiped. Okay, first... A shot rang out, and we can try presenting this. Objection! No! That's wrong. Your Honor, that's... Um, ma, 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 ma. Okay, you sure about that? Objection overruled. Try to think before we make accusations. Okay, but also... Um, tossing the pistol aside. It's either, it's either this or this. If we do this, tossing the pistol aside. Objection! No, not that either. Hmm. <sighs> Let me think. Makes sense because prints were wiped. If he fled and the pistol was tossed aside, who wiped the prints? And the knife was left on the scene. But what does the game want?
Maybe I'll try this. Tossing the pistol aside. Fingerprints were wiped. Okay, yeah. Okay, it was more straightforward than I thought it would be. Wait a second. Another misleading request. Yet you're so beholden to your own mode of discourse, you can't see how it affects you. Uh, come again? Wait a second, you say? A second? Are we intended to wait just that a single second, one sixtieth of a minute? That's hardly enough time to draw a breath, let alone make a statement in the court. Now, had you asked for a longer period of time, say three minutes, thirty-five seconds, Mr. Justice. Yes, your honor. Am I to understand you were objecting to the length of a second? Yes, I mean, no! Here, just look at the pistol! It doesn't have a single fingerprint on it. Ah, a common ploy made all the more common, I fear, by the prevalence of television. Criminals these days are low to have leave fingerprints. Wait, but you said the killer tossed the gun and ran. That's right! He didn't have time to wipe the gun for prints! <gasps> ah, the little girl sticking it into the university student. There's a song in there. What? I'm not little! <laughs> then let's think like adults, shall we, Fräulein? What if the killer, the defendant, was wearing gloves? I don't know, the description said it was wiped off. Alright. Gotta admit, I didn't think of that, Apollo. Well, Mr. Justice. Just a minute. Ah, uh, no way, Desio. Because this is found at the crime scene, bearing walkie prints. Or. But most of all, I trust the description. Fingerprints were wiped. <laughs> Bluff. The record of the murder weapon is very clear about one thing. The fingerprints were wiped, which means some trace of prints remained. Which contradicts your testimony. If everything happened as you say it did, he wouldn't have had time to wipe the pistol. That may be, but it does not change what I saw. The killer, the defendant. He threw down the murderous weapon from his hand and fled. Mm. And this pistol was found at the scene of the crime. I love that it's facing him. <laughs> Strongly suggesting that his was this was the weapon he disposed of. That sounds solid to me. Well, head of forehead, any of your precious objections? What gives, Apollo? Let's see that voice training go to work. You know, I've only recently realized something. No matter how much you train your voice, it doesn't matter if you have nothing to say. What do you mean, nothing to say? Isn't it obvious from what the witness just said? Huh? Isn't what obvious? When he restated what he saw just now, he said he saw Walkie drop a murderous weapon. It's not the same as being 100% sure of what Waki threw away. You're right. He's just confused because a pistol was found at the scene. Poor Mr. Stickler. It must be hard to be so perfect and yet so wrong. Well, it can be said that I'm quite offended. Well, it is indeed true that once in my youth I wrote a love letter that was seized by the teacher and posted on the blackboard for all to see and for this the appellation poor might be prefixed to my name as yet yeah, that's for the issue here. What can we say for certain is that the witness saw the killer throw something. Does the defense have anything to say about this? Well, if what he threw wasn't a pistol, then it had to be something else. At least one person on the defense team seems to be thinking. Urgh, I'll wipe that smile off your pretty face, Gavin. Perhaps you can inform the court as to the nature of this something else. What did the killer throw away before fleeing the scene? 
Is that a sword? I saw one of those on the late night movie last night. <laughs> Great. A sleeve deprived judge. This knife was found at the scene of the crime. With the defendant's prints on it. His prints. This single piece of evidence proves two important things. One, that what the defendant threw down wasn't a pistol. Two, that the defendant wasn't wearing gloves. Mmm, indeed. Oh, head of forehead? You're forgetting two other things you've just proven. Huh? One, that the man the witness saw was the defendant, Mr. Walkie Kataki. Two, that the defendant was holding a knife, which the, with the intent of harming the victim. <gasps> oh, uh, indeed. Uh, never underestimate that Gavin is the lesson here. This court is of the opinion that our witness is fond of making assumptions. <laughs> In that light, I believe it would behoove us to hear what about what really occurred. With less assuming, please. It is always the same with you people. Mark left the house on foot and five minutes later his brother left after him. How long would it take for Mark's brother to catch up to him? Assuming that Mark never had to stop for a traffic light. Assuming... Yes, that's what I said. Assuming. As if that were a probable situation at all. Yet here you are assuming that my assumption is no better. Uh, what this court assumes... Is that the witness will testify as to what happened after the shot was fired. My god. I could not prevent the killer from leaving the scene. Nor could I simply leave the scene in good conscience. Ergo, I used my cell phone to call the police. Until the police arrived at the scene ten minutes later, I saw no one else. Uh, what? Why didn't you chase the killer? He was, as you say, a killer. Of course, I could have run him down, yet what would he have done when cornered? Sadly, it takes more than an aptitude for solving quadratic equations to know that. Uh, the testimony earlier not proved the defendant's presence at the scene. And do we not also now know that there was no one else there? It seems clear that we have our killer. Does it not? Does it not, Mr. Justice? I'd better find a way to take this testimony down quick. <laughs> Hold it! Which way did the killer run? By that time, it was clear the killer hadn't noticed me. Naturally, he ran in the opposite direction. That would mean he ran in the opposite direction from the Kitaki Mansion. Achtung! Don't even think about pointing out that he was going away from his home. All he had to do was loop back once he was out of sight. Yeah, how did he know that's where I was going? Hold it! You are certainly composed for someone who had just witnessed the killing. If one is to devote one's life in the pursuit of science, one must never flinch at the sight of a little blood. Nor be so moved by a chemical discovery that one drops one's flask upon the lab room floor. Oh, cool answer. Very cool. <sighs> so nothing strange about how he acted. Tracy looks like she has something to say. Hold it! Uh, wasn't your first thought to call an ambulance? It can be said that I have dabbled in medicine. The injury I witnessed, namely a single shot to the head, tends to result in death. Ergo, there was no need for me to call an ambulance. Oof, he's like, ah, oh, he's gonna die anyway, bye. Oh, a perfect syllogism. A proof in three parts. Exquisite. Simply exquisite. He actually looks like he's going to cry. Until the police arrived at the scene ten minutes later, I saw no one else. Can you tell us in detail about these 10 minutes? I stood in a state of heightened awareness. 
Anything could happen at any moment. Anyone could appear from any direction. I is that all? No one came. Nothing happened at all. I saw it all, which is to say, I saw nothing. It was late at night. It's not odd to think there would be few people around in the park. So we just stood there watching? Uh, not much to go on there. Trucy, if you've got something to say, by all means, say it. Ah! I can't find a single problem with that testimony. Had enough at last, hair forehead? Maybe it's time to back off a bit. No? The defense still has some questions that demand answers, Your Honor. Hmm, your opinion, Prosecutor Gavin? Oh, let him play attorney until he's satisfied, I say. I will amuse myself by composing my next smash hit in my head. Very well, you may continue with the cross-examination. After 10 p.m. Ah, uh, do Ah, uh, do Hmm. This witness is way too self-assured. There's got to be a weakness somewhere in his testimony. There isn't anything left to unravel in this testimony after all. Some of us have glamorous careers we'd like to get back to this month, hair forehead. I don't have enough to put Walkie away yet. Should I back off for now? I guess it's scripted. Mm. There's nothing fishy about that testimony at all. It appears there are no objections to the witness's current testimony. There are any number of ways to explain the lack of points on the pistol, I assure you. Perhaps the killer really was wearing gloves, which wiped the pre previous user's prints off. Then, after the deed was done, this fell out of his pocket as he was throwing the gun away. A mistake befitting of a small-time punk, in my opinion. Ooh, someone's gonna be offended. No, no! It seems we've come to the end of the line here. No, that can't be all! How unfortunate. It seems that you weren't cut out to stand on the same stage as me. Were you, hair forehead? I believe this brings the cross-examination to a close. This court will now declare a verdict for the defendant, Walkie Kitaki. Trucy? Nobody move! What's the meaning of this? Who are you? There will be no verdict in this court. Not yet! Wait, are you one of the Katakis? The Katakis? You mean the notorious gangsters? If you don't want to see me give the pretty little girl a new smile, <laughs> do as I say. Oh! The knife is not the wrong way because she's about because this guy is about to give Trucy a new smile. So technically it's not really the wrong way. <gasps> what? This core will not bow to pressure from the likes of Hair Judge. For the throat, I would assume she. I, I would assume he or she is gonna carve a smile like the Joker, you know? Because <laughs> she said, a, he said a new smile. I see a little fun further aggravating this gentleman. Recess, twenty minutes, or I promise you, you'll regret it. Wait, how 
did it disappear so fast? Come to the defendant lobby, Apollo. Oh my god, is this one of her tricks again? I suppose I have no choice but to adjourn for a 20 minute recess. Bailiff, catch that mysterious man! Yeah, let's save. Oh shoot, save. Let's continue fast. Trucy! Trucy! You move quick, Apollo. Good show, good show. <sighs> Is it Phoenix? Oh. Trucy, you're okay. I thought... <laughs> Don't cry, Apollo. Those good-for-nothing gangsters. There's some things you just don't do. I'm pressing charges. Wait, just calm down, Apollo. Or else... Oh, or it's just that... Yeah, oh my god, I thought so. Oh, what the heck is that? Surprised? This is one of my best tricks. The amazing Mr. Hat. You look marvelous, darling. He's a big hit on stage at the Wonder Bar. Yes, I am a big hit. Ha 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 ha. Well, what do you think? Do you like it? Man, this is a family of lawbreakers. I guess, you know, the saying that Phoenix gave up on law is not because he quit being an attorney, he just straight up started breaking laws. You mean you- Trucy, there are some things you just don't do! <sighs> I'm pressing charges! Apollo, now is not the time to be threatening me! It's you who's being threatened here. Huh? Remember what you said to Walkie's father yesterday? You promised you'd save his son! But that testimony was rock solid! What are you suggesting I do? Look, once the judge declares the verdict, it's all over. If I can use my talent to stop that from happening, I will! Trucy, no more stage abductions, please. <laughs> He's so done. I'm not talking about magic, Apollo. I know when the witness isn't confident, I can perceive what he's feeling. It might not mean anything, but it's all we've got. You can see what he's feeling? Think back, Apollo. Think back to the times when there was a contradiction in his testimony. All the times. Uh, yeah, he's probably got a... He's probably got, like, some tick, but I was not paying attention at all. All the times there was a contradiction? I remember. Well, I think I remember them, sure. There were two times when he made statements he wasn't confident in. And each time, there was a contradiction. In his hand, he held a... Yes, a pistol. It was pointed at the man pulling the stand. He was looking at us? Tossing the pistol aside, he fled from the scene. He said the man tossed aside a pistol. But it turned out he wasn't sure, and sure enough, there was a contradiction. Well, that's true, but how does that help us? Did you notice anything? Whenever he made a statement he wasn't confident in, he displayed a certain habit. Oh, he stops. He stops flipping the pages and looks at us. Did you see it? The very moment he said the word pistol, his fingers got all tense and he fiddled with the corner of a page in his book. I guess so, yeah. How am I supposed to see that? Well, I could see it. How else do you think Danny went seven years without losing a game of poker? What? I always sat next to daddy during big matches. Really? I don't think she should be in a place like that. I could see what his opponents were feeling. You mean 
think that's how Mr. Right won all those games? That's not cheating officially. I wasn't looking at their hands or anything. And I wasn't there all the time either. Daddy's quite good at poker after all. But not good enough to go undefeated that long. Great, so he cheated. But what does that do for us? <laughs> it's kind of like counting cards in blackjack, you know? Technically, it's not cheating, but also... Er, I don't believe this. You have to listen to his testimony one more time. No, scratch that. Um, you have to watch his testimony. Perceive the truth. Watch a testimony? Perceive the truth? The only thing I'm perceiving is that I'm going to lose. Not true. Daddy said so. He said you have the power, Apollo. Mr. Wright said that? What's the testimony? Perceive his true feelings. Is she serious? Time's up. Sorry I can't think of any other way out of this one, Apollo. What was that she said before the trial started? What was... what? Huh. Mr. Wright's not here today? He said his old foot injury was acting up. Yes, he smiled when he said it would be fine. As long as you're there, Trucy. Is this what he meant by us being fine? Well, methods aside, she did avoid one guilty verdict already today. Time to show this court what I'm made of. Get ready for justice! Let's do it! Apollo? You know, I'm starting to think I can do this. I knew you could do it all along. Oh, one more thing. Huh? Ah! Gosh! Try to cover for Mr. Hat as best as you can. I just flew in from the coast and boy are my arms tired! Right... Uh... He's like, awesome! I can not technically cheat now! Rainy inhabits Apollo too well. Real! I feel connected to him. Court is now back in session. Uh, right, we're fine. <clears throat> I'd like to say to the young lady standing next to you, Mr. Justice. Oh, you mean me? Don't you have anything to report? Anything concerning the mysterious phantom in the silk top hat? Ah, right, him. Don't worry about him. I settled that. You settled that? Uh, yes, it was an out-of-court settlement, <laughs> right? Perhaps Fraulein would have us believe it was nothing more than a passing dream. A fantastic illusion. Now you see it, now you don't. Am I right? I think he's on to me. <laughs> I wish he would stop being so... so cool. Let us dispense with these nice teas and get straight to the matter. What are your plans for our gifted witness? <laughs> the defense would like to request another cross-examination. Because... Because I forgot to ask something, yeah. There is no issue with the witness's previous testimony. I will grant your request, however, but this court will not permit stalling for time. I understood, your honor. Don't forget, Apollo. When he isn't sure about something... He has a habit of fiddling with his book. <sighs> right. Ergo, I used my cell phone. To, yeah. He's like, I used my cell phone, but ah, sus. And then he's like, until the police are so no one knows. I'm not sure I'm qualified to watch testimonies after all. Focus, Apollo. Find his weak spot. Focus. If only it were that easy. My ears hear what he says, my eyes see his expression. Do I have to do something more? What other senses do I have? Sixth sense. What's this? My bracelet? Yes. This is so scary. This is so unsettling. 
What's going on? My bracelet feels different somehow. I think Daddy was right. You can see it, can't you, Apollo? You're almost there. Find the weak spot in his testimony. I know this sounds crazy. But my bracelet is trying to tell me something. Right. Arm, so we... Press? Or what? So you called immediately after witnessing the murder? The police undoubtedly have a record of the call. Why not check with them? Wait, Apollo? This has to be it! Wait, you mean his habit? Don't forget, Apollo. When he isn't sure about something, he has a habit of fiddling with his book. The only time he's even had this book open was here. Which means this is the place to look for this habit. I, I don't know how I know, but I know. <laughs> awesome. Know what? It's my bracelet. It's different somehow. I can feel it react to something about the witness. Woo! Look at that button! Your bracelet? I'm not sure I get this focus stuff you were talking about, Trucy. But I have a feeling that trusting my bracelet is the way to go. Okay, I just need to touch my bracelet with Y as it reacts to the testimony. Hi. Oh my god. The eye zoom. What's going on? I can see the witness's face, his expression so clearly. It's filling my mind. I can see nothing else, hear nothing else. Apollo? Uh, uh, Trucy, what's happening to me? This is what I meant by focusing. Focusing. In this state, you can see everything, Apollo. Everything the witness does. Yeah, I can see his uh, plump lips, I guess. Uh, that's great, but this is kind of freaking me out. You're freaking me out as well. Just look for Mr. Stickler's Twitch. His habit. You remember it, right? Sure, when he says something he's not sure of, he fiddles with a page of his book. You got it. Right now, you're looking at the witness's face. And your eyes are sort of bugging out. I'll bet, I'll bet they are. First, move your focus of attention down to Mr. Stickler's hand. His hand? You know what to look for now, but you have to be looking at the right place. She's right. I can only see his face like this. Time to try changing my viewpoint. Oh, look, a badge. Perfect! Now you're really ready. Ready for... what? Ready to perceive the truth behind the Twitch! Perceive? Try listening to the witness talk as you focus. Then watch for his habit. Right, you mean when he fiddles with the page. That's right! That's your signal to look closer. To perceive with why. Find his weak spot and I guarantee we'll be able to give him the royal flush! Spoken like a true poker head's daughter. I'm a magician, thank you very much. So I have to pay attention to his words and his fingers. Don't worry if you miss it, you can always try again. Right, look out nervous Twitch, here comes justice! Hi. Ergo, I use... Ah, ah, mm. I see it. I use my cell phone, basically. Oh my gosh, trippy. Uh, I saw it just now. I could see it. Mr. Justice, do you have something to say? All this banging of desks. It's quite bad for my circulation, you know. Uh, Mr. Stickler, allow me to ask you a simple question. Why did you fiddle with the page of your book just now? The very moment you mentioned your cell phone. W -w -w what are you talking about? I'm curious now about this cell phone of yours. Mind if I ask a few questions? Uh, what to ask, what to ask. Ask to see his phone. Mr. Stickler, please show me your cell phone. Arr, why, whatever for? 
Show me, and you'll find out. Well, I can't. I don't have it, you see. You don't have it? Mr. Stickler. Is this your cell phone? Ew! Where did you get that? That's the phone from yesterday. Look, a cell phone. Someone dropped it beneath this tire. <gasps> he hit it there. And in the process, he dropped the cell phone. But this was after the car was parked. I mean, obviously, I guess. If the car moved, it would be crushed for sure. I wonder if it belongs to the doctor here. How strange, Mr. Stickler. Can you explain why your cell phone is sitting here in my hand at the very moment? He stole the panties. Yeah, when I first saw him, I said, is he the panty thief? Uh, it's because Trucy said, wait, he looks familiar. So I have, I'm like guessing maybe he could be. But now he's not making it look good. Wait a minute, what is the meaning of this? The cell phone was found yesterday in the Maractis Clinic garage. The Maractis. Why, that's where the victim lived. Here, yeah, that's impossible. Mr. Stickler, you lied to the court, didn't you? If your cell phone is here, how could you have called the police? It's true. I didn't have my cell phone that night. That is why it can be said that I called the police from a public payphone. A payphone? So you didn't call your cell phone after all? Just where was this payphone located, Mr. Stickler? Well, to indicate it with a startlingly high degree of accuracy, it was right around here. Mm. That's quite a ways from the park. But, but why did you lie? There can be only one reason. He didn't want the court to know he had lost his cell phone. Because it was found in the victim's garage. What are you saying? Mr. Stickler, you broke into the Maractis Clinic garage on the night of the murder. This cell phone tells all. Oh, but that's ridiculous. That makes it sound like... Like I snuck into this fellow's garage to commit some crime. As though I were trying to kill him. Well, Dr. Maratis was killed that night. Oh, well, yes, but no, this line of reasoning has to be against the rules. Yes, it's true, I lost my cell phone. But you can't prove that I lost it that night. Yes, I can. Well, Mr. Justice, if that cell phone was dropped the night of the murder, it does raise considerable suspicions as to connection with the crime. Now it's your chance, Apollo. Connect Mr. Stickler to the crime. Oh, he's already connected enough. I just have to prove it. Well, do I have a piece of evidence that can do the job? Yes. Can I prove the cell phone was dropped on the night of the murder? Um, can we actually? Can we actually? Because I know how it is, but... Uh... Mama, mama. Of course I have evidence. Ooh, I like your swagger, hair forehead. Hit it. The court will see this evidence, Mr. Justice. Hit it, as they say. The evidence that proves the cell phone was dropped on the night of the murder is... It was because, like, if you see the photo, it's clearly impossible. You know, you, you get what I mean, right? You get what I mean? That because it was in between the front and back tire, it's impossible. Ah, do you? Whatever. 
That's a side view mirror? As it so happens, Dr. Maraxi's car was in an accident that took place the night of the murder. An accident? An accident? It happened a little after 9 p.m., just outside People Park, our murder scene. Dr. Maraxi's car hit a pedestrian! How? What are you trying to say? From the absence of a mirror, it's clear that the car was parked after the accident. Which means it was parked there after 9pm on the night of the murder. If your cell phone had been dropped before the car was parked in that garage, it would have been Kalindus. Then it would have been crushed. After all, it was lying on the ground right under the wheel. Ergo, Mr. Stickler. The only time you could have dropped this in that garage was after 9 p.m. The night of the murder in the park. <laughs> Mr. Stickler, you know what this means? You did break into the victim's garage that night. This is most unexpected, Mr. Justice. Are you naming the witness as a suspect in the murder of Pal Maractus? No, 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 stop! This is too much! This can't be happening! Prosecutor, say something! I suppose it is worth saying this. No connection has been found between Wesley Stickler and Pal Maractus. That is, other than this. I believe our next testimony will be most revelatory. Is the witness prepared? Yes, Your Honor! <clears throat> I know that face. That's the face of guilt! Let's bring the car to court and examine it. That night, yes, I went to the supermarket. I must have dropped my cell phone on my way back. And when I was walking through the park, I happened to witness the crime. I saw the killer, the victim, the stand, all as clear as day. What? It was him. I saw the defendant at the scene. What? Yes, but your cell phone was lying in a garage. Ah, yes. Well, as you can see, my model of cell phone has a defect. It is given to rolling. It's quite a pain when I drop it alongside the road, you know. Looks like a normal cell phone to me. In any case, Mr. Justice, the cross-examination, please. Uh, that's funny. My bracelet didn't react at all during that testimony. This nervous habit must not be acting up. I didn't sense anything either, actually. Looks like you're on your own this time around. Right, no problem. I hope. Here comes justice. Hold it! <laughs> so, you went shopping, which means... You were holding a grocery bag when you witnessed the murder taking place? Eh, well, yes, of course. Incidentally, the prosecution has received no report of this domestic detail. Mr. Stickler, can you explain yourself? No, I mean, yes, I did go shopping, really. I walked around the supermarket, trying out the free samples. <laughs> this is so sad. It's a deeply spiritual time for me. I'm sure the store clerks would disagree. Uh, do you think sampling free food counts as a religion? In any case, that night... I sampled to my heart's content and was on my way back home, yes. I must have dropped my cell phone on the way back. Hold it! Uh, that's when you passed in front of the Maractus Clinic? Why? Yes, that's correct. That was a pretty suspicious pause there. Mr. Stickler? Do you think you could be a bit more... specific? Please show us the exact route you took on the night of the murder. Oh, this is important. D of course. The supermarket is there, along the main road. The way home from there? Okay, so... Okay, so he see El Dune House. This is when I dropped my cell phone. 
That was like 9.30. Woe is I, I walked on, unaware of my loss. And walk right into that fateful park. The heck? And when I was walking through the park... Which entrance did you enter the park from? Well, to be exact, one might say that I went in from the entrance closest to the Maractis Clinic. The same entrance our victim used. Did you notice anything when you entered? Meal marks from a noodle stand, for instance. Uh, I have no, no recollection of such a thing, no. What? Yet, though I might have missed the tracks, I could not miss what happened next. I am a keen observer of the obvious, you might say. <laughs> I saw the killer. Katanya gelap, goblik. This part of the testimony is the key. I know it. Should I press him about the killer, the victim, or the noodle stand? Do you happen to remember the noodle stand? Quite well, yes. For a student of the sciences, keen observation and healthy curiosity are vital. I remember everything. I could even read the sign. Uh -huh. I believe it said... Err... Noodle. Yes, that was it. Huh? No, it doesn't. No. Acho tomate. This changes everything. Because it doesn't make sense. If the wound is the right temple and as he claims... If, if, if he shout it, then if, if he turns to the... If he turns to the way the, of the witness, he would have been shot in the left temple instead of the right. If we're remembering something quite well, it sure took you a while to tell us. And thank you for telling us that a noodle stand sells noodles. Very enlightening. So his whole testimony falls apart. Well, Mr. Justice? Hmm, what about that sign? Could that be important? Yes, it's very important! So the sign in the noodle stand said... Noodle? It appears the defense has just obtained a vital piece of testimony. Is this noodle stand's broth really that delicious? <laughs> Yo, I want noodles! I have to go sample the wares one of these days. I think that's worth adding to the testimony as well. Huh. Whatever sort of noodles that stand sales, it can't match up to Ivy U's cafeteria. <laughs> it's the top of guy. Some apply to the school merely for a taste of our smart noodles. I wouldn't mind a taste of that myself. <laughs> Why, I even remember the sign of the stand the victim was pulling. It said noodle. I don't know. I'm gonna press first because I don't know what to present. So the sign said noodle. You're absolutely sure? Hello? <laughs> Let me be frank. Yes. <laughs> in fact, the word unsure isn't even in my dictionary. Nor the word uncertain or... He was wasting time looking that stuff up. Noodle, eh? I like that. It tells you what you're getting. No nonsense. It tells me a lot more than that, actually. Why are you smiling like that, Apollo? Right. And you're absolutely sure the sign read noodle. Why, just last week, my professor offered me this praise. At least you have good eyesight, Stickler. I'll give you that. I don't think that's a good thing. It read, without a doubt, noodle. I see. What? What are you looking at me like that? Is that pity I see in your eyes? Uh, let's take a look at our map, shall we? Uh, so, you're claiming that when you saw the sun, you were standing... Uh, here, was it? 
although it would have been a bit hard to read the sign from this spot... You think so? Mr. Stigler, I would like to, to please take another look at the stand... And to carefully read what the sign says. See? The sign actually states the name of the stand's owner. L. Dunes. Inconceivable! I'm certain it was definitely Noodle for sure. Positive! I'm afraid your professor was wrong about that eyesight. No, he actually wasn't. I wouldn't be so quick to jump to that conclusion. The sign is not changes everything. The witness says the sign said Noodle. And he saw it right. What would you say if I told you... That there is one spot from which the sign would be read the way Mr. Stickler claims. What? Mr. Justice, show us this spot. It's his testimony that's 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 wrong, not his eyesight. <laughs> I mean, the professor was right. His eyesight was correct, but everything else, no. The witness actually viewed the stand from this location. The witness was standing here on the opposite side. How do you know that? When viewed from the south, the sign in the stand reads El Dunes, as we know. However... Observe the other side of the stand. Was he the one who disposed of the patty on the trash can in the trash can? This side says Noodle. Exactly. The name of the stand is split between the front and back signs. Mr. Stickler, you lied to the court. You witnessed the crime from the northern side of the park, not the south. Yeah, you got me. So what? So what? What does it matter if he saw the killing from the north of the south side? It makes no difference at all. He is right. Travel far enough to the south and you will end up going north. Huh? Viewed on a global scale, directions are utterly without meaning. Uh, actually, maybe he's right. What does it change? It changes everything, Apollo. Trucy? Remember his testimony from before. Though, to be honest, I'm a little scared of where this is leading. Ooh, flex that 3D! The killer and the victim are facing each other here. Then, at the moment the killer raises his weapon, Mr. Stickler shouts, Ah! At which point, the victim turns his head to look, and the killer fires his pistol, BAM! Right temple! That's why the bullet hit him in the right temple. No contradictions, right? Right, but if Mr. Stickler was standing on the north side of the park... That reverses the whole scenario. And his old testimony falls apart. Right. Completely. If Mr. Stickler shouts from where he is now... And the victim looks in his direction... The bullet would have to hit his left temple. Uh, ah! In other words, someone standing at point K. Yo, thank you so much for the gift. Could have shoot the victim in his right temple. It's impossible. That's right. So, now that we know that Mr. Stickler was standing on the northern side, the wound location takes on an entirely different meaning. Indeed, you're absolutely correct, Fräulein. What, what meaning? The entry wound was on the right side of the victim's head, correct? Well, the right side of the victim's head is north. North. Ah! But that's where the witness Wesley Stickler was standing. Correct. So if he was standing to the north, then the only person here who could have shot the victim in the right temple was him! 
was Mr. Stickler himself, even though I don't think he did it. Yeah! Order, order, order! Wow, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. She flipped this whole case on its head while I was still figuring it out. Objection! <laughs> Clarify one point for me if you would, head forehead. What now? Are you truly accusing this college student? Of murder? No, I'm accusing him for something else. Well, I can't say he exactly looks innocent. But something still doesn't feel right. I just can't picture him as the real killer. <laughs> I mean, the only thing he's got is his eyesight. No, please, looks aside, I'm really a nice guy. <laughs> what do you mean, looks aside? I didn't say anything. All my friends say so. Let's hear what the defense has to say. What are you going to do now, Justice? Should I really accuse him? I'm gonna accuse him for of another crime. I don't think Wesley Stickler is a killer, but he's not innocent either. His unusual silence tells me that much. Mr. Stickler, you seem unusually quiet. Tell us why now. The, the, the word confession isn't in my dictionary. Test, test, head or forehead. I'm afraid it falls to you to elucidate Herr Stickler's silence. Uh, Mr. Justice, you did say you were accusing the witness just now for a crime other than murder. Your reason? The court's all ears. Uh, I know he's guilty of something, but what crime other than murder is there? Oh, man. Do I have evidence that shows an involvement in some other crime? Your evidence? The court's all eyes, Mr. Justice. Show us evidence that points to the witness' involvement in a crime. Take that! This one? The evidence is this! <laughs> what? Is that women's underwear? Hey, those are mine! Hello? 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 <gasps> don't, don't, don't look at me like that! <gasps> Jeez. Uh, order, order, order! Mr. Stickler, while I can't say this comes as a shock. <laughs> Yo! Stop roasting him! It's not what it seems by Fita Gorilla Theorem, I swear it! Fita Gorilla? On the night of the murder, just past 9 p.m., a young girl catches a panty snatcher red handed. Bravely, she gives chase, but the snatcher flees and hides himself in no other place than the Maractus Clinic garage. Aha! Incidentally. <laughs> These panties were found in the exhaust pipe of the car there. Presumably, he was trying to hide the evidence of his crime. Ergo, while you may not be a murderer, you're guilty of panty snatching in the first degree. <laughs> Please, hear me out. It's not what it looks like. Oh my gosh. Order, order, order. Mr. Stickler, you should be ashamed. It's... It's not... What? It... Seems... <sighs> so, are we to understand that you were silent not because you were guilty of murder, but because you lacked the courage to admit your theft of this girl's undergarments? <clears throat> Perhaps you are not aware that my school's name was originally written IV. I stands for intelligent. V stands for valiant. See? Your point? I'm not done. Now, I'm a major in the science department. And what does science teach if not curiosity? <laughs> Yes, we of the IVU science department are valiantly curious. 
No challenge is too daunting, and what greater challenge to science than a mystery? Come on! You're talking about a girl's panties here! No, you do not understand. A mystery is the unknown, and the unknown is unacceptable. And my friends, when it comes to mysteries, those panties are the promised land. From the moment I first laid eyes on them, I was compelled to investigate for science. Huh? A full-sized car tire was only the first mystery those panties revealed. A, a tire? Yes, I saw her do it. She pulled a tire out of those panties. Well, I guess it was, um... I, I guess I was really curious. But that's not all. First, there was the tire, then a stew pot, and a frozen chicken. One mystery after another. It was... It was magic! I guess so! Oh, I remember now! He's one of the regulars in the audience at the Wonder Bar! Oh, so that's why he looks familiar, sorry. Huh? He's talking about my magic panties trick! I just don't understand. A broom from a pair of panties? It mocks the very laws of physics. A broom? And a frozen chicken, Trucy? Whatever happened to those and bunny rabbits? Mr. Stickler! You stole this girl's panties to understand a magic trick? You say panties, but they are so much more than that. For me, they are an object for serious study. I wonder... There has been a recent rash of panty snatchings in the area. Oh yeah, how do you explain that, huh? Were they all you? I... I am sorry, but I did it for science! Each time I spied a pair of panties flapping in the breeze, I thought maybe... Maybe this would be the pair that would elucidate the mystery, even that night she chased me through the streets. I wept tears of joy, perhaps this is the night that I will seize the truth that lies within those panties. Yet woe was I, for once again the lacy heart patent truth slipped through my fingers at... Still, that leaves one thing unexplained. Ah, you refer to our witness's other lie, yes? The witness claimed he saw the crime from the south, but it was in fact in the north. <laughs> mm. Indeed. Would anyone care to explain why he lied about that? Be my guest, Air Forehead. Me? Did I not hear you correctly? Did you not say you do not accuse the witness of murder? Da why then did the witness lie about his location at the time of the shooting? Plum's underwear. Or have you no idea? Apollo? There's something about the way the diagram is arranged right now. When you think about it, right near where Stickler was standing is the Thera. Well, Mr. Justice, what say you? Do you have any evidence to show why the witness lied about his location? Yes, I do. The evidence that shows why he lied is this. What? More panties? <laughs> How many panties are you carrying in your pocket, head forehead? These are the last, honest! These were found in a trash can at the park. Uh, looking at the diagram... We can see that the trash can was right next to where the witness stood. Mr. Stickler, you didn't. Alas, I'm a failure as a scientist. I can't unravel the mysteries of the universe. I can't even unravel a pair of panties. So, these panties are your handiwork as well? Th that night, I had been chased, hounded into the Raptus Clinic garage. <laughs> like, why does he look so cool in this, you know, in this picture somehow? Weeping in frustration, I was forced to abandon my prize. Don't you see how I felt? Believe me, I'd rather not. I hid in the garage for a short while. Then, abandoning the panties, I made for home. To avoid the office where the girl works, I went towards the south entrance. Ah. When I saw them hanging there on the clothesline by a giant mansion. When was Phoenix hit, though? Oh, before, I guess. Because that car was there. A giant pair of panties! Apparently he didn't know those bloomers belonged to the mob. I had them safe in my pocket, ready to take home. When I stumbled upon a murder. 
the murder of Dr. Maractus. I reported what I had seen, but as I waited for the police to arrive, I got scared. What if they search me? That's when you dispose of the bloomers. Yes, it was a severe blow to the progress of science, but one that had to be born. A fascinating, if disturbing, tale. <laughs> right. Of course. Uh, I believe this brings today's proceedings to a close. And I'm more than pleased to dismiss this witness for the remainder of the trial. One last thing, if I might. Uh, yes, Prosecutor Gavin. Regardless of where we ended today, some vital points were made. Namely, that the defendant, Waki Kitaki, was at the scene of the crime. Yeah, we kind of totally forgot about him, huh? And he was pointing a weapon at the victim. One more thing. Waki Kitaki has a clear motive. Indeed, the defendant Waki Kitaki is still the prime suspect in this case. The only suspect, in fact. Assuming there was no one else on the scene at the, at the time. Yet, a mystery remains. The location of the wound in the victim's right temple has yet to be explained. The court requests further investigation from both the defense and prosecution. <laughs> but what's the motive? What motives? Heart motives. Yeah, baby. No problem. Very well. Uh, this brings the trial for the day to a close. Court is adjourned. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. What is going on? Oh, oops. And okay. Well, I think. Um, this is a good break time. Uh, next time I think it would be good if we check out investigation day two and if we can, um, check out the trial as well and see what we can unfold from that. Yeah, case two is not that bad, right? Oh, this game is so unhinged. It's crazy. This game is... What is going on? <laughs> That's crazy. Well, I guess I, we still, uh, have a little bit of time uh, we can actually read the uh, super chats actually yeah hold on let me clean up some stuff um uh, before we start reading the supers and yeah i no words <laughs> wait yeah <laughs> oh that's crazy all right um let's let's uh i'm gonna move because uh we're kind of finished with the um we're gonna finish with the game for now. Awesome. All right, we're back. We're here. Yes, I'm finished playing the game. Four sons. Oh my gosh. This game is so unhinged. It's it's pretty awesome actually. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this much chaos. It's only the second case. I feel like the first case, the first case was already so wow you know it was impressive right and then the second case is just yeah it's, it's not even investigation day two and it's so much chaos like the whole revelation about how trucy was at trucy was at the bar all the time you know accompanying phoenix and stuff like that. you know those little details that make the hey the game super unhinged um it's so far my favorite part of the game <laughs> Yeah, it's very... It's very silly, in a way. Um, endearing, I guess. In a way. <laughs> Pretty neat. Yeah. It's... Yeah, that's it. That's it, actually. That's that's what makes it so charming, I feel like. I thought... I don't know. Like, the first trilogy? Uh, the Phoenix, right? I mean, they have their silly moments, you know? But you're, it's just like, ah ha 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 ha, you know? And stuff like that, but... This game is really something else. And I can't believe Dr. Hottie is there. The, 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 oh my god. The bait and switch was crazy. I was like, Hottie Clinic, please don't, 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 don't let it be Hottie Clinic. And it's just like, oh, it's a uh, Hickfield, was it? It's a different one. And it's like, oh, wait, why do I see him? <laughs> that man is eternal. And then we get to see Emma as well. So from what I understand, Emma might be our gumshoe for this game. 
Let's hope um, she stays. And I think she will stay. Mm. Out of everyone, somehow Dr. Hottie is the returning character. <laughs> that's... Oh, God. That's... Oh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I know... Um, I'm very impressed at how much Trucy is carrying the trial so far. And I really like Apollo's character. I don't know why, but... I know Phoenix kind of has that shtick as well, the rookie attorney. But I don't know why. I feel like Apollo is just thrown... I feel like Apollo is just thrown into the chaos with all these chaotic characters and everything is just super unhinged and he's just like, Ugh, you know, you can, you can, you can imagine him walking with like an exasperated sigh every like 24 seven in that universe, you know, and I relate to him so much on that. It's crazy. It makes you want to cheer for him. Yeah. <laughs> um, opinion on Clavier so far. I think he's cool. I think he's cool um, in a in a positive way. Um, very cool. He has style. He has riz. Uh, he has air guitar. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Nice first impression. He seems like a person who's um. He's actually not. Um, you know how it is that all these the uh, prosecutors in the past have been here to like, you know, somehow they just hate our guts. And he, I don't know if he hates our guts or not, but if he does, he's really good at hiding it or not showing it. So it's kind of a good uh, change of pace, you know? He's not an antagonistic, he's just there to vibe, you know? He challenges um, Apollo and stuff, but I get this really nice chill vibe, you know? Yeah, like I said, a good change of pace. Um, the game feels really fresh. Compared to Ace Attorney, even though it's part of the same trilogy, same court system, blah blah blah. But with the different characters and the different everything, um, they stuck to the same mechanics, but somehow just made the game feel really fresh compared to um, the first uh, trilogy. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Fancy 3D stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so far, I like it. I like the cast. I like how the story's going. Witnesses are pretty funny and outrageous and unhinged. We, um, are the people we're defending are uh, <laughs> characters charming? So so far, I really really like it, and I'm very very um, I'm really looking forward to check out the next case. I'm not really sure if we can do. I'm not really sure if we can do Apollo Justice next week though. Hmm. Because we have, um, you know, because it's like uh, Expo is coming and everything, uh, Fest is coming. Uh, I don't know how my schedule is gonna be, but yeah, we'll see. Mm, we'll see. We'll see. I'll make it up to you guys uh, if we don't stream um, AJ next week. By next next week, yeah. Mm. Next week will be hectic, yeah. But oh well. It's all good. It's all good, all good. I hope you guys are excited. Doom 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 doom. Anyways, we're gonna be reading La Super Chats. Thank ya. Come up now. Hi, 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 hi. We have. On Test Chief. I got my mocha cake ready for Apollo Justice and Adventures and whatever wacky defendant and witnesses. Wacky? That's crazy! Because the guy is literally called Walkie. <laughs> walkie Kitaki. And rather than Walkie Talkie, it just seems like he's more wacky than a Walkie Talkie. Uh, we have Elsie Lappin. All the coffee talk reminded me to recommend the orchestral collections for Ace Attorney series. Godo's theme, done in high quality jazz, is top tier. I'll check that out. Thank you so much. I, have, I still have coffee. This coffee is really good, but... I don't know if I should drink coffee. I feel like I should sleep. But yeah, um, we have Zipli. Thank you. We have Thaddeus. Can't decide if Nick is the luckiest or unluckiest. Always getting into deadly situations. Poisoning, falling off bridges, getting hit by a car. But always avoids major injury. Hmm. We have Slot of Shadows too. 
You should try eating something really out there like candy canes and then see if it's suddenly Christmas and everyone in Ace Attorney is eating candy canes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah, man, I want some noodles right now. I just had noodles though. Oh well, maybe I can have some before I sleep. We have Franzis, a stolen noodle cart, and a panty thief. Is this Ace Attorney or Ranma 12? And not Ranma 12, Ranma half. <laughs> Nice. We have Anton M. Don't worry, Rene. I've got you covered. Here's some insurance funds in case your panties get stolen. Thank you so much. We have Star Creator. Bless you. We have Anton M. He made the brown new sign from Natural Source too. What? Like like dirt, right? Like dirt, right? We have Slot Shadows. Maybe Phoenix loves medical examinations because they uncover the truth about his body and he yearns for a truth no matter what it's about. I guess. We have Ferdinand Yonatan. The stepladder mother put her feet on it. Huh? <laughs> we have Anton M. We need Marakiat slippers and Iranian magic panties merch. I bet they'd be selling like hotcakes. Mm. We have Sloth Shadows. I'm going to adopt the head cannon that Walkie Sherm means gumshoe started the Blue Badger Mascot Merchandise Company, left his job with the police, and finally had enough money to eat consistently. Yeah, I would like to think. It's been a while, right? He probably got a new job or something. A reward, a more rewarding one, I sure hope. I mean, right? Quit law. We have Anton M. Nom, 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 nom. We have Anton M. Elma is such a dork, just like Wayne. Yay! Yay? I don't know. Here's all the shadows. MSG for memories. So good. Yeah. Um, we have Zipli, Slot the Shadows, Sadias, Vale Gelato, Jacob47. Thank you. And Anton M. Speaking of panties in Russian, Trusi sounds like panties. Fuck. I wonder if Nick is aware of it. <laughs> Really? Uh, that's crazy. We have Sloth Shadows. Poor Apollo. He was so bright and full of pride and hope for his future as a lawyer. Now the real world is grinding him down and these ideals are being destroyed. Well, he'll get used to it. Ah <laughs> oh, man, he about to learn the hard way. But I guess he's already starting to see it. Well, we can only say hang in there. Here comes justice! We have Slot the Shadows. I knew people in middle school who talked exactly like Walkie. It's like I'm there again, but they didn't have his sense of style. <laughs> we have Violet Gelato. Uh, Damn Stickler must have learned from the Edogawa School of Magic Science. Oh god. Oh. He's an Ivy though. Intelligent and valiant, was it? We have Anton M. Oh no! Trucy was stolen just like her panties! And Miss Plum will bury this poor guy in that park alive. <laughs> his, yeah, valiant, as, as in like his valiant search for panties. Real. Um, we have Laggy Couch. Thank you so much for the Aka Spa. Thanks for the streams this week, Rene. Yay! Thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoyed. We have Anton M. Can't confirm science changes people. By the way, do you have some magic undies? For research purposes, I swear. Guys, don't be creeps like that person. You don't wanna you don't wanna come across the wrong person like Plum and have, I don't know, unpleasant things done to you, I guess. You know? Just don't be freaks, okay? That's 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 what I ask of you. For your own good. Alright. Um, we have Nicholas M. Thank you. <laughs> we have Jen Wei. In TGAA, there is a Hada Clinic. Some things are eternal. Hey, Uso. There is a Hada Clinic? I never paid attention. Hey, Uso. <laughs> really? In case one of TGAA, John Wilson had his tooth removed at the Hada Clinic? Oh my god, that would have been so funny if we played that later! Oh my god! We can't escape Hottie. 
That's crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> what? We have Darth Pika. Thank you for the great stream, Rene. Now I will sleep with new alarm. Even tomorrow Sunday, I will use alarm. Oh, alarm the one for from this morning? I don't know. Uh huh. We have Anton M. Do you slurp your hair like Mr. L. Dune? Uh, no. <laughs> Choking on hair is actually it, you know? I don't think you should be able to um, swallow hair. You know that scene in a horror movie when the girl is choking and then when she uh, gets whatever out of her mouth, it's just like hair like just like a long strand of hair. You know? You know, you know? I think it was uh, one of the classic horror movies. Was it Juon or something else? I don't remember. Yeah. I always get them kind of mixed up. Was it Juon or The Ring? Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Something like that. Yeah. Just, um, I just remembered that. It's one of the curses that she gets. But anyway, I think uh, that's it for today. Thanks so much. Wow, what a long day. And we um, finished it with some good old Ace Attorney. Yay. Ace Attorney. Yeah, technically, it's Ace Attorney. It's just a pull of justice. <laughs> it's a pull of justice Ace Attorney. That's correct. Anyways, okay. Um, tomorrow is Ziz Day and tomorrow, the next day should be Ziz Day, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, this... <laughs> next week's schedule is a little bit uncertain, but I'll let you guys know, okay? Terima kasih perhatiannya. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Salam Rakyat, everybody, and I'll see you next time, okay?